Quentin Flowers, 42 total touchdowns last year. The American Conference Offensive Player of the Year. One of the most electrifying players in the country. He's got USF on the road against San Jose State. We'll talk about that game coming up. Plus, do our over-unders. You don't want to miss it. Stay with us. All right, Quentin Flowers just talked about Willie Taggart. He was the one that really got Flowers going, and now he's one of the best quarterbacks in the nation. Taggart's in Oregon. USF has Charlie Strong at head coach, and Strong inherits Flowers, and you see the phenomenal numbers from last year. When we come back, our experts reveal their early season ballot for Heisman. What does it say about the chance of a repeat when the defending trophy holder doesn't garner any love for my cohorts? Mm. Don't worry, Christian, you're going to have time to defend yourself coming up. <laughs> Quentin Flowers, there's a dark horse yes. for 19th yes. ranked USF. There's a man, Andre Sachere, who's going to be defending that high powered offense led by Flowers at home for San Jose State. Home for number 19 USF. We're going to talk about this matchup coming up at the bottom of the hour after the break. Excitement here in San Jose. It's a new era of San Jose State football. It's also a new era for USF, the number 19 Bulls, led by Charlie Strong, who spoke with John Trippin moments ago. Coach, here it is, the start of the Charlie Strong era. What are your emotions heading into this game? Well, you know what, John, it's not about me. It's about our football team, and I just love how they've worked from uh, January to where we are right now, and they had an unbelievable uh, it's a preseason camp and their, their, their whole attitude and you know it's all about building on last season and but I'm, I'm just happy to the leadership that has been provided by our seniors but it, it's going to be a good day and I'm glad that you know today we have a chance to come out here after beating on each other for you know five weeks now we have a chance to go play an opponent you know coming off of last year there are a lot of high expectations for the year for the team this year specifically your quarterback Quentin Flowers many believe he could poten potentially win the Heisman this year how have you helped him handle this added pressure well, Quentin is, is a special player, and uh, what he's been through, he knows how to handle adversity, and he knows when to pick himself up when he gets knocked down. So, and the thing about it, he's done, he's not made it about himself. He knows it's a, it's a total team effort. It's going to take everyone playing together. And the thing about it, when everyone play together, whatever personal goals that each one to have, they have a chance to reach. San Jose State, a lot of unknowns about this team. They have a new offense. We don't even know who their quarterback is going to be. What concerns you the most about this game? Well, the concern is like you say you just don't know yet obviously and it's a whole new coaching staff and so you know the thing we have to do is just make sure we get lined up and then you know we'll know early you know it may take one or two series for us to get our feet in the ground coach thank you so much good luck in the game all righty thank you thank you well, that's charlie strong there now san jose state two years removed from a bowl game and a win in that bowl game last year taking a step back to just four wins so they went out and got a new head coach in brent brennan who gets greeted in week one by a top 20 team with an excellent QB. The quarterback, brilliant player. Um, they've got a really nice team. And Willie Taggart didn't get the job at Oregon by accident, right? He won a bunch of games at a place and did a really nice job there. And he's got a great roster with good talent. And then they've you know, replaced him with a guy who's an excellent, excellent football coach, Charlie Strong. Whatever happened to Texas, I just think he didn't have enough time. You know, maybe sometimes those places don't give you enough time. So they got an outstanding coaching staff, they got really good talent, and they got a great player quarterback. Meantime, USF coming off an 11-2 season, including a win over South Carolina in their bowl game. Quentin Flowers accounted last year for 42 total touchdowns and was named the Offensive Player of the Year in the American. Now Flowers returns for his senior season with some Heisman buzz surrounding him. You know, I never grew up saying I win Heisman, but... People saying that now, you know, I'm a Heisman candidate. Uh, it just is it's different. You know, a lot of people coming to talk to you, following you on social media, trying to get to know you. Every year, I, I just tell myself, you know, I have to improve on everything that I did last year and, you know, whatever I need to do this year. So uh, every year, I try to, you know, eliminate interceptions, um, increase my touchdowns, no matter what it is, if it's running or passing. Um, and just doing whatever it takes to win. You know, our goals is to go undefeated and win the championship. And I mentioned the dark horse, and we'll show you the schedule in a moment. But first off, if you're Charlie Strong, you get fired at Texas, perfect spot to land. 
If you're Quentin Flowers, you got everything in front of you for a magical season. Uh, you ought to be excited, and, and I know Charlie Strong is very excited to have a quarterback like that because what, what happens, guys, is you all know, there's going to be five times in a ball game where somebody misses a block. Five times, something will break down. Well, guess what? You got Quentin Flowers, and he knows how to improvise, make it happen by extending, extending a play, and he can beat you with his arm. He can also beat you with his feet. Yeah, you know, when, when Quentin Flowers was became the starter, the team was one and three, and people were starting to question whether Willie Taggart even knew what he was doing. Since that point in time, Willie Taggart is now the head coach at Oregon, and Quentin Flowers is 18 and four as a starter. There's a reason why, and Brent Brennan, the head coach at San Jose State, he mentioned that. If you have great players, and they and they help you win games, you're going to get the benefit of that also. Now, there's a lot of lot of lot of expectations now on him, and he's supposed to be that sleeper uh, quarterback to win the Heisman. But now everybody's talking about him. What, what's going to be interesting is how much will they change the offense? Because they're pretty pretty comfortable scoring a lot of points last year. Now Charlie comes in with a new staff. Well, Sterling Gilbert, the offense coordinator. Well, how much will he change? How much pressure is there on him? Because we're going to show the schedule here. They have the opportunity to absolutely run the table, not just be the best team in the American, but the best team in the group of five here, Coach. Oh, well, as a coach, you always put that pressure on yourself, but you're right. The way it's laid out, the schedule's nice. Now, traveling that far away from the country, you got to handle that travel right. You're going in a couple, of, two or three time yeah. zones, Christian. You've what did we that. say when we were watching? Ooh, Who scheduled that? Right. <laughs> that's, a tough, that's a tough road trip, but when you look at the schedule, Quentin Flowers, 42 touchdowns last year. You got the advantage. You know, we were saying that, you know, see Houston on the schedule. We were saying the same way, saying the same things about Houston. And Houston, you know, okay, can they go undefeated? Can they do it? And then they ran in and they had a couple losses. They, they ended up losing to Navy. Just one of those games, those teams, they start thinking that they can make themselves known by beating you. So they get, a, they give you 100%. And that's what they need to be ready for. Everybody wants to make a name for themselves by taking down Quentin Flowers, taking down South Florida, proving to that they're just as good. So... High expectations, a lot of demands. We talked earlier in the preview earlier in this segment that, that Coach Strong didn't know who the quarterback was he's going against. Uh, now we do. It's, it's Josh Love, and he has struggled in his career so far. This is a big spot for Love. Just a sophomore. You see the numbers from last season. Home for San Jose State against number 19 USF. Coming up in moments. Now our late game moments away. And as fate would have it, San Jose State running backs coach Alonzo Carter, he's a former backup dancer for MC Hammer. Sounds like a joke, but it's a true story. Here Coach Carter was recently dancing in front of his team at practice. Unfortunately, we weren't able to play for you the can't touch this music, but uh, you get the idea. I mean, Christian, there's nothing better. As a player, to find that information out, and then to see that. Well, as a player and a, as a former dancer also, I, mean, I, I, I totally understand the technique and the dedication that goes into making sure you can be an MC Hammer dancer. I mean, that's impressive, Coach. I know you I'll have some moves, smooth. but right. you know, you're too nervous and too shy. Look at that. I mean, he's still getting down. Uh, I'd say he looks pretty smooth. Yeah, yeah, this is moments ago before oh, tonight's game. still doing it. Right. He just got rhythm. I just can't imagine <laughs> as a player you find out that that years ago, Christian. So you were a dancer. I, I was. And I, and, like and, professionally or just in the club or, or what? In the club. In the club, no. You ever heard of the Solid Gold Dancers? Never heard of them. Yeah, no. My my, uh, my stage name was Rico. Who? Wow. Yeah, Rico. Why don't you come out? Show I got, us. I got, I wore my pants. That's what you got. got what my, are you wearing uh, there, MC Christian? Hammer pants on. See that? Oh, my so, God. So, and then, like. So oh, usually, my God. You know, go like, into the light. You know, I go into the light because I'm going to tell you that there's no shame in, in, in knowing how to do and, and be an MC yeah, Hammer. Oh so, coach, so, what, coach, what, can what has some, this Can I get become? some music, musical accompaniment? See, what the key is to make sure you show the, the stag hanging down. And then you, you give him uh, a lead. Uh-oh. And then you, be like, and you go like, and you go like this, and you go, oh, 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 uh oh, uh oh. Uh -oh. Wow. Just kind of move okay. around. Yeah. Hey, you got to bring it back in. Yeah, yeah, the the pants are the key. You got to keep Christian. your pants moving. And then you Christian. take it a little bit like this. Do the spin again. You got to do the 360 a bit Wait, better. Hold on. There, okay, that's better. Yeah, that's better. He should be backing up. He yeah. should be on Britney Spears' crew. Back, in, back up dancing with her. These are actually really comfy, though. A lot, two, lot of air two. in here. Lots of, lots of room. I mean, yeah, a lot, of, these lot of air up there. Lot, what? Oh. <laughs> Two-time Super Bowl champ, All-American tight end, national champ at Colorado. My, my can they did change the well. rules in the NFL. My, you can celebrate it. My question is, did you do that in front of Coach Belichick? <laughs> of <laughs> course not. <laughs> not. Oh, <laughs> did I have a rookie show or something? Or No, but I was a rookie with Seattle. No, that's no, right, no, right. no, no. I wasn't. No, no. Hey, so my US, nephew was the dancer. If, if we could bring this yeah. all back in for the final 30 seconds here. USCF is ranked number 19. They got a, a coach with a huge name in Charlie Strong. They have a guy who's, you know, a dark horse. Quentin Flowers, 
to win the Heisman, at least become one of the best quarterbacks in the country this year. This is a huge statement season. It begins tonight. Here's what's important, though. Quentin Flowers doesn't need to go out there and say, okay, I got to go win the Heisman tonight. I think that's the worst thing you can do. Got to take care of the football. We know he can run. You know he can throw the football. Play within yourself. Don't try to be Superman. I read an article today, and the title of it was Quentin Flowers, the best quarterback nobody's talking about. Not anymore. Everybody knows who he is. Time to prove it. Schedule sets up. They might just be the best team in the group of five. Christian, Want me to dance you out? I'm Brent. Please dance out. We'll see you oh. back here at halftime. Enjoy the game. <laughs> USF won 11 games last year. Now enter Charlie Strong, his team with very lofty expectations here as they kick off the 2017 season. Together, we will accomplish great things. The future of this program is very bright, and I'm thrilled to be leading it. Every year, I, I just tell myself, you know, I have to improve on everything that I did last year and just doing whatever it takes to win. I don't do a lot of talking. I just go out there and show my actions. There's no reason for us not to go year in and year out and compete for championships. Our goal is to go undefeated, win the championship. But you got to take it one game at a time. That's all we can do. A win over USF would create a lot of momentum. It's a great atmosphere. You know, obviously it's opening game of the season. I think the win over uh, USF would really set us up for the rest of the season. Happy college football as our opening week doubleheader continues with number 19 USF and San Jose State. College football is indeed back on CBS Sports Network and tonight it's presented proudly by Geico. Number 19 USF in San Jose, California to take on the San Jose State Spartans and it is a pleasure to be back with you for another year of college football here on CBS Sports and CBS Sports Network. Alongside College Football Hall of Famer, three-time Super Bowl champion with the Niners, Randy Cross. My name is Ben Holden and Randy, every year in college football there's turnover. There's hope, there's optimism, but I go back to that turnover. There's change, and in this game, there's an awful lot of change. Oh, there is. I mean, this game kind of epitomizes all the change in college football this year with new coaches, new coordinators, new everything, except these two teams might know each other as well as anybody out there are going to this this week in college football. It's amazing the connections. There are several. We'll get into them as we move along throughout the broadcast. And Charlie Strong, couple of national championships at Florida as their defensive coordinator. Great success at Louisville. Was let go at Texas last year. He's here. This team, 11 wins in a bowl game last year, and he has one of the most electrifying players in the nation in Quentin Flowers. Well, yeah, Teddy Bridgewater at Louisville had nobody at Texas. Takes this job and he's got a guy that deals with air as well as anybody in the country. You let him have air around him, he'll make plays like this. And just when you think you've got him, like at the end of that run, it's going to be a touchdown. Well, the other part about this kid's game is he had 24 touchdown passes and threw for 2,800 yards last year. And he's a 62% passer. So easy to say, this kid does everything. Yeah, he does it very well. We're excited to have him here on our air looking forward to seeing him play here today. For San Jose State, new coach, but a guy that he's really not that unfamiliar with this San Jose State program. He's got some great ties. Uh, he's got fabulous ties. His dad, Steve, played football here. He used to tailgate here when he was a little kid. You know, doing a wonderful job or did a wonderful job as an assistant coach. Got this job. He wants to reintroduce the community to their football team, and this would be a great opportunity. The best part about this team right now might be their offensive line, which probably says as much or as little about them as you want to say, but these guys are very smart. They're extremely physical, and they'll give them a running game that'll keep them in most games they play. And the key will be, can they finish? Keep our eyes on that here today and throughout the season. Third member of our broadcast team, John Schriffen, down on the sidelines. John, tell us more about this South Florida defense and what's on their minds here today. Well, they certainly will have their hands full. That's because there are a lot of question marks surrounding this San Jose State offense. They put in a new system, and at this point, we still don't know who their starting quarterback is going to be. Because of that, when we spoke to South Florida's defensive coordinator, Brian John Marie, he admitted to us it's a little scary coming into this game not knowing what to expect. He is going to have to rely heavily on senior linebacker Augie, Augie Sanchez. Now, when you're watching at home, pay close attention to number 43. When you see him waving his arms, walking around,
up to the line, adjusting them. That's because he's changing the defensive play call. He saw something out there he didn't like, and he has to get everyone on the same page. Guys, Sanchez is the key to stopping San Jose State. Very good, John. Thank you. Look forward to having you with us this season on our broadcast. Game time, 10 91. Randy, perfect day for football, right? Yeah, really. Well, look at the humidity 27%. That's how you know you're not in the South or in the SEC. You're out here in California. They're saying 90 is hot. Not this version. It's a dry heat, right? Oh, the, the, I can tell you the South Florida kids, I was talking to their athletic director, Mark Harlan. He said they were all smiling. They said, this is 90 degrees. Are you kidding? <laughs> So we're set to go. South Florida, the University of South Florida, in the white uniforms and those sharp looking helmets. Emilio Nadelman has it teed up. He'll kick it away to Ziegler on the near side for San Jose State to our left. And Roberson on the far side of the field. USF won the coin toss, they deferred. 19th ranked team in the nation. USF kicks it away to start their season, and it's going to start with a penalty flag as the kickoff went out of bounds. 92 degrees here at kick time here in San Jose. It's David Alvarez, our referee, our head referee here today. So our first look here at Josh Love, their starting quarterback here to open the season. It's our Chick-fil-A starting lineups. And we mentioned about how good that offensive line is, but Love's going to need protection. They can, pass, they can run block. He touched on that as Roberson gets it. Tackle made by Nico Sautel for USF. You notice this pace. They want to play at this pace. This is new for San Jose. Hand it off again in this USF defense. Many key parts back. Nazi Wilkins in there first to get him. Here comes the challenge for Love. It's a passing down. Can they protect him? And will he complete it? Third and four. Now backs off and looks to the sidelines. Andrew Souter, part of the change and all the ties. The coordinator. Offensively for San Jose State takes a shot and he overthrows Hartley, the intended target. Wilkins was back there on the coverage, brings up fourth down. Yeah, you mentioned Andrew Sauter, their offensive coordinator, 29 years old. Last year was quality control coach at Texas for Charlie Strong, coincidentally. That's part of the connections yeah. in this game. But he said to be a quarterback in this offense, you got to be cool. You've got to be accurate, and you've got to be able to throw those balls you just took. They will take lots of shots down the field. Full Woods back to return the punt of Carrizoza. Outstanding skill set Carrizoza's got. High one, and you're going to let it go. And that's a beautiful punt, Randy. Where are they going to mark? It's the question. It's just across the five. Well, the, this is a term. This is a term from the Stone Age. That was a coffin corner kick. <laughs> Chick-fil-A lineups. And we take a look at the young man we talked about in the open, Quinton Flowers. And what he did last year, absolutely amazing. This season, we got a flag on the play, though. So the word there from David Alvarez, so. We'll start on about the two and a half, three yard line. Yes. And getting back to Flowers, the only quarterback in the FBS to rush for more yards than Quentin Flowers last year, the guy that won the Heisman Trophy. Yeah, Lamar Jackson did that. And with the key for Lamar Jackson was he got off such a great fast start. And that's going to be the key for Quentin Flowers. He wants to be a Heisman Trophy candidate. This team wants to be. A, a, a New Year's Day bowl game kind of a team. For that to happen, he's got to get off to a fast start. This team's got to build their confidence early and ride it through the season. Six foot, 215 pounds, senior out of Miami. First play of the season offensively, and they hand it off to Dearness Johnson, who is a very talented one. The rest of their offense, and you highlight 
Valdez Scantling today. Yeah, I like him. I saw him last year when they were at SMU. First play of the game, he caught a 77-yard bomb for a touchdown. He's a big play receiver that's learning to be an every play receiver. I expect big things out of him this year. He's a big boy, 6'5 and 207 on the ground again. It's Johnson trying to cut there and went down after a short pickup there. The San Jose State defense, who's the key for them today? Well, to me, it's Ethan Aguayo, their former nickelback, now inside linebacker. He's going to have to be the kind of guy. He's a former DB, so he can maybe keep pace with Quentin Flowers when they have somebody spy. Here's Flowers taking his first shot of the game down the far sideline. And Sachere was over there on the coverage. They went for the guy you just talked about, Marquez Valdez, Scantling, and they break it up. That's going to be a big, big part of their offense, just like we saw San Jose State go long. That ball hit Scantling or Valdez Scantling right in the chops. I don't know if there was a little bit of the sun involved in that, or maybe it was the reflection off his own helmet, as bright <laughs> as these things are. Um, but that was a really well-thrown ball. He couldn't ask for a better throw from Flowers. He put that thing right on the face mask. And we only know that because it bounced off it. Yes. So if you're San Jose State, you're going to likely get very good field position here. Ty Cottrell, we got a flag on the play, is back in midfield. Waiting the punt and the indication it's against USF. Delay a game. Team team. Half the distance. Fourth down. I will warn you about Quentin Flowers. Nothing spectacular. I mean, that was a heck of an arm and a heck of a yeah. throw there. But he'll look like this for a series or so. And then suddenly you'll blink and he'll have a 50-yard run. And then he'll throw another bomb down the field and it'll be complete. That's how this kid plays. Good pressure there by San Jose State. A short punt. It's going to be inside the inside the 20 yard line by the time they get this thing. I mean, it hit the bench, so where it went out of bounds is going to be about the 25, I think. Yeah, we'll see where they spot it, but it's a perfect start if you're San Jose State trying to knock off number 19 USF and Charlie Strong back to San Jose in a moment. All right, good, uh, good situation for Brent Brennan and his offense. Only had three plays last time. Now they get this wonderful field position. This is a field goal. This is points on the board. So when you're calling plays here, they've got to be aimed towards don't mess up the points you got right now. Just an 18-yard punt. Love hands it off. They've thrown one pass. The other plays have all been on the ground. That was Roberson with the ball. Malik Roberson. Yeah, this offense, Belichko, Gonzalez, Taylor and company, Poloni, Kowalski. This line can do it. Love swings it out. Some space out there and a nice tackle to take down Roberson in the open field there by Ronnie Hoggins, a junior who's a good one at corner. And it was one block of, out of Josh Oliver, the wide receiver who was lined up split on the top of the screen there. He gets a block there. It's a touchdown. Third and a yard. Again, Roberson. He leans forward. This may bring on a measurement. San Jose State offense, Chick-fil-A lineups. You really like this young man, Randy, up front. No, nah, I really do. Let's go easy. He does everything. And we'll hear a little bit more about him later because he's a guy that's really been involved in this community. But he's good academically. And he's a captain type of a player up front. So fourth and a yard in San Jose State opting to go for it. Roberson's got it. Put his head down. And based on the spot I'm seeing, Randy should have it. And he goes inside behind Gonzalez and Taylor and Coloni. That's where the money was, and that's where he got that yard. Good job inside, because you're dealing with some pretty, pretty good-sized fellows up front with Sanat and Hector. That's 300-pound-plus guys in there. Tough to block them, as you well know from your days. Here's Roberson again. Roberson, they faked it. It's deflected. And Love put it up in the air. It was tipped as Love got in there. There's a flag on the play, though. We'll check the marker. That didn't work out well, but that was a heck of a play action fake, wasn't it? Very good. <laughs> Roberson checks out of the game. The running back for San Jose State. 
Zamor Ziegler, number 34, in the game. Still awaiting the call on the penalty on the flag. Here it is. Nelsburg receiver downfield. Offense number seven four. Five yard penalty. Still first. Chris Gonzalez, the right guard, the senior, called for an eligible receiver downfield. Look for that a lot this year in college football. Across the board, you're going to see that called more because offenses have offenses have kind of strayed downfield a bit. Here is Josh Love fires and incomplete. Was looking for Hartley. Incomplete. Hartley along with Justin Holmes, two guys that Andrew Souter told us yesterday. He said they're going to be in the game basically the entire game at their wideout spots on the outside. Nice job by Maisie Wilkins getting in there, getting his arm in there between the arms to deny that pass. Second and 15 now. Love under pressure. Hangs it out there and Gaither could not get over there to get it. Bruce Hector applied the pressure. Yeah, this is somehow you have to find a way to do it. And defensive coordinator Brian John Marie has got to find a way to dial it up and keep regular pressure on Love at quarterback. So third and 15 here now. Love dumped it off. Incomplete was looking for the tight end Josh Oliver, the junior who they're very, very high on. And incomplete. Yeah, this is a kid that, you know, he's played a good bit for this team. He only had three receptions last year. He does have two touchdowns, one in 2015 and one in the Cure Bowl. Yeah. Last uh, year before last. Two but years ago, uh, yeah. this guy can play, move around. They're going to use him as a trapper. They're going to use him inside, outside, all over. So Bryce Crawford, the junior out of Frisco, Texas, on to attempt the field goal. And Crawford, who was outstanding a year ago, as you saw, 16 out of 18, starts 2017 with a field goal there. San Jose State up early, 3 0. College football on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. By Verizon. Not just unlimited, Verizon Unlimited. And by Chick-fil-A. Start game day strong with the new breakfast hash brown scramble bowl. Prior to the game, the Air Force exhibition team, the Wings of Blue, Making some jumps in, and Randy, your keys to victory for these two teams first, South Florida. For USF, it, it, turn it up. Do it on offense, do it on defense, do it the whole game. That's how you're going to have to play, and that's how you're going to have to win this year. Start today. San Jose State, it's pretty simple. Who are we? As a team, they really don't know who they are. They've pointed that out. But one thing Brent Brennan, I think, is going to insist on, they're going to finish. They're going to find a way to make things happen late in the game. And that's a mark That's a mark of a good coach, and that's a mark of a really good football team if you can. No question. They went 4-8 and eight last year, tied for third in the Mountain West West Division as Ernest Johnson bobbled it there. And they'll start their own 25-yard line. Touchback called. And so if you're USF now, it's Charlie Strong go to his, his guys and say, look, wake up. They've been out here for a couple days, right? Yeah, they got here, got out here Thursday, long trip. You know, like I mentioned earlier that I talked to Mark Harlan, the athletic director yeah. for, for University of uh, South Florida, and he said he had several kids, but not, not a bunch, maybe like two handfuls <laughs> that had ever been to California. So most of the kids in Charlie Strong's program had never been on a flight this far. 2,300 miles from Tampa, where USF calls home, of course. Toss play, and there's Ginda all over Dearness Johnson. Frank Ginda had 99 tackles a year ago, and a big one here. Yeah, what do they say? Got 99 problems, but getting to that play wasn't one of them. <laughs> that was a game up front, slanted the defensive end. Ginda was coming right off his backside into that C gap. That set him up in perfect stead to make that tackle. An outstanding play by the junior California product. Loss of five, second and 15 now. Facing Quentin Flowers and USF. Flowers. Nowhere to go. 
They're after him, flings it out of bounds. And that front did the job there, Randy. Yeah. Owen Roberts and Bryson Bridges. It was forward, but it wasn't past the line. Is that, a, is, is that, is that intentional grounding? The flag on the field. I mean, he was definitely doing that to avoid getting sacked because they had him cornered. They did indeed. Bridges and Owen Roberts. Here's a call from Alvarez. The quarterback was outside the tackle box. However, the ball did not reach the line of scrimmage. Lost it down at the spot of the pass. Down count. And the key in this is he was outside the tackle box. So right there, he's out the number. That's well outside the tackle box. Then he throws it out of bounds, but he doesn't get to the line of scrimmage. So they lose the down and some yards. And right now, the team that's kind of has the early jitters and hyperventilating would appear to be South Florida and not San Jose State. Charlie Strong in his first game as USF's head coach. Highest ranking they've ever had. The Bulls to begin a season. They finished the season last year at number 19. Game clock operator, please reset the game clock. Please just set the game clock to 10.30, please. So they'll add nine seconds. And a third and 22 facing USF. Now, when you watch this play unfold, concentrate on how many Spartans, how many jerseys in blue are actually rushing the quarterback. There okay. may only be one or two rushing. Right. A third kind of spying, and the other eight may be dropping in pass coverage on this down. Third and real long. Ernest Johnson on the delay. There they come, and they get him. Another loss. And that San Jose State defense, Jamal Scott helping lead the charge along with Dakari Monroe. They force a punt. They're fired up here in San Jose. Well, this is a run defense that gave up 246 yards a game last year. Had one of the better pass defenses because of that. Teams ran against them more than passed against them. Returned all their defensive backs, but right now the highlight, what they've done against South Florida has been that front seven. From the end zone, and they bring pressure again to the Spartans. And Cottrell with a fair catch at the 49-yard line. Number 19, Team the Land down 3 nothing, albeit early on here in quarter one against San Jose State. Early on in this opening quarter, Ben Old, Randy Cross, John Schiff, and all of our crew, San Jose State on top of number 19, USF 3 nothing. Tuesday at 7 Eastern, join us in studio as our panel of experts tackle the stories from this week's best matchups around the nation. It's Inside College Football, presented by Sleep Number on CBS Sports Network. Now, Randy, you have great ties, of course, to this area from your days with the 49ers. And you know Brent Brennan very well. I didn't know until we got together on Thursday how yeah. well you know this guy. Yeah, I, I've known him forever. I met his dad in 77. Yeah. So I've, I've known this whole, his whole family forevermore. His mom, Beth, and his late father, Steve, were my oldest daughter's godparents. We vacationed together. It's, uh, we go back. We're familiar. <laughs> right now in his first game as a head coach. Now, he, he came from Oregon State. He was there for six years, coached their wideouts. Well, more importantly, he played football at UCLA. He, well, of course, you're a proud Bruin, I know. Yeah. yeah, played there. You didn't play together, obviously, but no. he played there 90, early 90, 91 to 95 as a wide receiver, of course. And he's had a long assistant coaching career. Been yeah. a lot of places, including San Jose State, long time at Oregon State. First coaching job is a nearby Woodside High School. Pass to Holmes. He gets away. Holmes inside of the 15. And San Jose State on the march. Yeah, Holmes number nine is a possession style receiver. Not necessarily that, that guy that's going to burn down the field. But as you saw there, he can get that ball. And he's big and strong enough to get some tough yards. 32 yard pickup for Justin Holmes. Love. Fires back that way, right back to Holmes. 
The short gain there is Ronnie Hoggins was there to make the stop on Justin Holmes. And a whistle halting play. Trying to get the sticks set up properly. Even the chain gang's got to hurry the way these offenses <laughs> run, right? <laughs> I tell you what, you know, there, there's a lot of offenses that run this pace and want to go quick. You won't see many that move faster than San Jose State, I guarantee you. Pretty quick. Great pace, great tempo, total yards, USF minus 10. The difference in the game right now, a 34-yard field goal for San Jose State to the end zone. That one's well out of the reach. They went back to Holmes. He's been the hot guy on this drive as Hoggins was there on the coverage again. Well, they've got a pretty good physical mismatch. Just a look at the size out there of Holmes. A great position, though, at that corner pack, cornerback position, not letting anything get inside of him. Ziegler, the back, lined up next to Josh Love. Love flings it near side, catch, touchdown! San Jose State touchdown, there is a flag though, back at the 25-yard line. It's right about where that ball was thrown. It's either a hit on the quarterback or a hold, trying to protect him usually when it comes in that spot. Yep, so we'll check that, but a beautiful play by Brent Brennan and his offense, they are discussing Josh Love, the start here on opening day, the pass there to Bailey Gaither. The play is a touchdown. Personal foul, rough in the passer. Defense number 10. The penalty will be enforced on the ensuing kickoff. The previous play is under further review for targeting. So they're taking a look for Targeting as we'll look back, Deidrin Sanat, the one, the penalty, they said number 10 was called on, Randy. Oh, uh, what a great confidence booster for Josh Love. He Ooh. gets that late shot, and he gets, Sanat gives him that shot right in the face. That's clearly going to be called anytime, anywhere against any quarterback at most levels. But, you know, Josh Love last year had his most extensive playing time against Iowa State, had one touchdown, was right at 50% completion, but threw four big interceptions. And right now, he looks like a completely different quarterback. The confidence he's showing in the pocket is a stark contrast to then. And despite that helmet, that forehead into the, into the chin bone, I think he's pretty happy on the sideline. Got up, fist pump right to Sanat. As a referee here, Alvarez talking things over. He'll get the headset untangled. Here's the definition of the rule of targeting, 15-yard penalty. If you make forcible contact with the crown of the helmet to the head or neck of a defenseless player. I think the chin's part of the neck, isn't it? I, I would agree. I mean, I think that's based on the rule and watching that I'd say that's a targeting penalty yeah the, the tough the tough part about that for Sinet is it's early it's the first game but watch how long he's got his head down yep and I know it's slow motion and, and I know he's going full speed but you got to see the fact that that ball's not there you can't follow through especially with that head into the chin there's Josh Love on the sideline appears to be okay there's more than a few quarterbacks out there that have a few scars under that chin from getting that shot. Checking him out to make sure he's okay. One of the training staff members. And there's Deidrin Sanat, who anyone's concerned with. He is a big young lad in the middle. Well north of 300 pounds. San Jose State telling us yesterday, yeah, we're concerned. He's one of many we're concerned with on the defensive side of the ball on this veteran USF team. Yeah, well, behind him is Marlon Gonzalez, who's a 272-pound sophomore. Or even on the other side, it tackles Kevin Bronson, who's also 276. So size-wise, there's a big difference if Sanat's not going to be in there. Still discussing this with a replay official. Here it is, real speed. 
Casey, great job by our guys down in the truck. Yes. That's what we, you don't see often enough is real speed replays. So you can see there's still a step and a half or so of decision making time of maybe I pull up, I know I shouldn't do that, that ball's gone. And he did, he did not do that. And I think that's the reason you've got to say this fits the category. Coming around on an end tackle game. And he does get around, but. A lengthy review of this. They want to make sure Charlie Strong and his team right now the point after upcoming down nine nothing not even halfway through the opening quarter the number 19 team in the land USF and could be on the brink of losing one of their best defensive players. Yeah ironic too. the fastest player on the San Jose State receiver core Bailey gathers gets a a red zone little crossing pattern dump off for a touchdown. After Here's further the review, we're in on the field. The target is confirmed. Number 10 is disqualified. That is a huge loss as Deidre Sanat is gone for the rest of the game. And again, looking back at the rules for targeting. So he's out for the rest of this game. If it happened in the second half, of course, He'd be out the first half of the next game, but in this one, he's, he's done in game two. He can play. Well, the more, most important thing for the Bulls on that sideline is composing this offense and keeping them on the field a little bit. Yeah. The defense has been on the whole time. Extra point is good. A 10 nothing lead. San Jose State on top of number 19 USF. You'll see gather run into your kitchen here. Just a little tackle. Yeah, hit me in the chin. Give it to me again. <laughs> 8.28 remaining in our opening quarter. The number 19 team in the land, USF, down 10 nothing to San Jose State. Bailey Gator with a touchdown catch on the last drive for San Jose State. Like to remind you to please help those affected by Hurricane Harvey down in Texas. You can visit redcross.org for more information. The storm hitting land last night. And certainly thinking of all those people down there. Yeah, and it's it's in town, it's in Texas, and it's going to be there for a while. Yeah. So it, keep those people in your prayers because there's going to be a lot of water in South Texas. Absolutely. How about this? A 10 nothing lead for San Jose State. Kicked off there after the penalty. Short kickoff, touchback as we look back, Randy. Yeah, look at right here. You've got Jamon Davis right there. Inside receiver is Gaither. And remember, we said this is one of the fast guys. Davis is a big physical safety slash linebacker. This really is kind of a mismatch. He drives his pattern right into the safety. Watch him drive it in, then cut it off. And Davis doesn't recover in time. That's. That's pretty much easy pickings in that offense. So Quinton Flowers and USF from the 25 yard line. They've average starting field positions been the 18. They change it up here in the backfield. It had been Dearness Johnson getting all the totes of the rock to this point. This time it's Darius Tice will change a pace. Stop made by Frank Ginda. Now you've seen the downside of pace here the first couple of possessions by South Florida. If you don't have it long, the other guy probably does. <laughs> Here's a toss to Tice. Puts a foot in the turf and gets close. It'll bring up third and less than a yard. Ginda again on the tackle there. And how about that, Randy? 11th in FPS last year at over 500 yards. A lot of game to go, but a minus one halfway through the first quarter. Well, not to mention how many games scoring over 30 points. 17, and they stop them. San Jose State's defense. The second time today we've called that young man's name, Jamal Scott. And we see three runs in a row. And Scott doing a great job dealing with the, the blocker, comes inside of him, gets in the inside shoulder, sheds the blocker, and makes the tackle short of the first down. 
And after another three and out, giving the ball back to San Jose State. Here's Hernandez on to punt. Not a good day for him thus far. This one's down on the turf. Cottrell backpedaling, fair catch called for. He takes it just inside of the 20 yard line, does Ty Cottrell. 6.57 remaining. San Jose State up by 10. Welcome back here to San Jose State University as the Spartans currently lead by a score of 10 to nothing over University of South Florida. It is time now for this week's Phillips 66 Athlete of the Week, and he is Nate Velichko, offensive lineman for San Jose State. As a 3.6 GPA in the classroom, he is a four-year starter on the field and a two-time San Jose State University Dean Scholar. He also spends much of his time off the field helping and volunteering at Washington Elementary School. Now, every Friday, he brings teammates to go along and play along with the kids. And he told me, he goes, you know what? The school is not in a great neighborhood. Actually, they had violence there one time, and he was warned not to go. But he said they went anyway because they love the reaction they get from the kids. He enjoys spending time with them. And in the future, he wants to help people potentially become a police officer. Guys. Excellent, John. Those are the great stories in college football you love to hear. Outstanding. So we're halfway through this opening quarter. Number 19, USF down 10 nothing here on the road. This is Roberson, left side. Gets out to the 25-yard line. He was stopped by Augie Sanchez. Over 300 career tackles for him. Haven't seen much out of Josh Oliver, the tight end position. No, they went to him once. And this one nearly intercepted. That was Sanchez right on cue, Randy. Yeah, Augie San Sanchez. He doesn't get cheap tackles. This is the guy that's got over 300 in his career. And when it comes to being near the ball, you try to sneak one over the top of his head. He may not be the tallest guy in the world, but he's going to challenge that sucker if you're going to try to throw it over him just like that. Starts the 2017 season, number two in all of FBS in active tackles. Came into the game with 303. Field general of their defense here is Michael Carrizoza on to punt it. Some pressure there, and it'll bounce at the 32-yard line. Takes a great bounce for Carrizoza. Dare I say, Randy Cross, another? Coffin corner. Just about, just about, yeah. It's pretty amazing field position right now, but. 69-yard punt. You know, if you've got Quentin Flowers and Charlie Strong and the expectations with this football team, you got to do the little things. And right now, some of these little things they're not doing. Yeah. One of the little things might be getting a little closer to that, maybe catching it before it bounces. Right. And, and in this case, Quentin Flowers in this offense, you got to take a deep breath, stay on the field, start making some first downs, and you got to put some points on the board. Because right now, this offense is way underperforming. 6.06 to go. Flowers again starting deep in his own territory with this USF offense. Tice. Good pick up out of him on first down. And the Spartan defense today, this is a look at some of their work, Randy. Yeah, and their defensive coordinator, Derek Odom, he and Brent Brennan kind of shared the corner offices at the Oregon State facility. And, you know, when he got, Brent got the job, he waited a few days before he offered him the D.C. job, mainly because things were so crazy. Yeah. But, no, you got to say, Derek Odom and his whole staff has done a, pretty much yeoman's work on this game plan so far because they've really contained the offense for South Florida. That was Odom there in the hat. You see the yardage in the game. USF 0 for 3 on third down. They need six here. Flowers got a ton of real estate. Pointing for a block. He's got it to them some. Quentin Flowers has it. Good pickup. Gets out to the 33-yard line. First down and 10. USF. Well, pretty good job by the defense and nice patience. And they'll take it with taking what they give you. This is probably you're, it's worth giving Quentin Flowers those times those type of yards rather than an open field. He fakes there and then he got dropped. Good pursuit there by 
the area there coming on to make the tackle was Trayvon Bieria. Yeah, Bieria known as the guy that'll really light you up as a contact guy coming from the safety position does a very nice job in the open field of taming Quentin Flowers. Redshirt sophomore he is out of Carson, California. Loss of two on the play. He's under pressure again, and San Jose State brings it. William Osai leading the charge for Derek Odom's defense. They bring the blitz. Osai comes inside. He does not get blocked. Actually, the left tackle tried to get his hands on him, couldn't quite get his hands on him. And when Eric Mays couldn't get any meat on him trying to block him, Osai was clear right to the quarterback. Derek Odom. Just one more. Th I'll get to that later. Third and 18 here first. There's a funny part to that story, but nothing funny about what's facing USF here. And Odom's defense, they do it again. Bryson Bridges. On the stop there. And Odom, you were talking about it took a little bit of time. He said he texted Brent Brennan. He said he didn't reply for three days. He's like, man, I thought yeah, we were he, boys. He congratulated him. <laughs> yeah. Didn't hear for three days. And Brent calls him back and says, man, I'm really sorry. I, I didn't answer, but things have been a little crazy. Oh, yeah. by the way, you want to be my DC? <laughs> it worked out good for him. <laughs> Hernandez on the pass block. San Jose State, that was Bailey Gaber, picked up. Here they go, Monroe trying to take it back. And he gets down to the six-yard line. Glenn Brennan and his San Jose State team, they have come ready to play today. How about this afternoon so far that Bailey Gaber has had? He got close one other time. This time he finishes it off and actually clips that ball pretty good, almost smothers it, and then almost throws the block that springs it for a touchdown at the same time. How about that reaction? There's a, there's a rookie coach a little happy with his guys' efforts so far. Golden opportunity for San Jose State. First down and goal. Hernandez trying to figure out what happened. Trips receivers top. Yep, they're looking that way. Love flags out. Caught. Gator. It's a touchdown. Bailey Gator with his second touchdown of the day. And San Jose State is stunning USF. Uh, they're going to take another look at this, but watch how it gets squeezed in by Love. I tell you what, whew, there was one place that ball had to be, and he put that ball right in that spot. Fit it right into his body. That was not a bad job on the defensive side by D'Angelo Antoine. Three eleven to play in this first quarter. San Jose State has seen plenty of change, and Brent Brennan here in his first year as their head coach. They want to take a look at this. Yeah, it's a scoring play. Yeah. They're going to look, and again, yep. it's going to be where the ball was, where it was caught, because he was pushed back out. But remember where it was thrown? Yes. And the way his body kind of curled up before yep. it was thrown, he had to throw it, I think, across the goal line. Here we go. To be a touchdown. Watch Gaither right here. See him t twist his body. Then he's thrown out on about the one and a half yard line. Tough to tell from that angle. Yeah, if you don't see it from the dead side, I'm not sure if this end zone shot's going to be much better. Where does he go down? He's pushed back. I mean, he's right at the goal line. And I'm not sure we're going to be able to give them the kind of shot that's going to say definitively right. that wasn't a touchdown. And as a result, you know, now with replay, more often than not, yep. if you don't have that definitive shot, it's going to stand. The call is going to stand. That's correct. So Charlie Strong hoping they can find something to overturn this. His team is being turned upside down early on in this game. They're down if this stands 16 nothing. Bailey Gaither, red shirt sophomore, said he's the fastest guy hands down on the team. 
Well, right now he's one, he's their best possession receiver because he's yes. got, he's got a couple that are just blue collar catch it and get in the end zone kind of plays and he's done it both times for his football team. Oh, by the way, he also blocked the kick. Exactly. Here's Alvarez with a call. After first review on the field, every touchdown stands. Bailey Gaither blocking the punt of Hernandez. Dakari Monroe, the return to set him up. And right now, Brent Brennan, San Jose State Spartans on top, 16-0. Here comes the point after attempt from Bryce Crawford. And that's blocked. So it remains 16-0 with 3-11 to play. Getting a hand on it was Bruce Hector up front. What a start to the season for San Jose State on top of number 19, USF. We're back here at SefQ Stadium, San Jose State. And number 19, USF, Ben Holden, Randy Cross, John Schriff, and all of our great crew. Glad to have you with us here on the first weekend of college football. Some would call it week zero, but it's week one to me, Randy Cross. That's right, doggone it. It counts. <laughs> it does count. It's not preseason. These aren't exhibition games. That's right. Carrizozo with a good kick and thinking about it, then bringing it out is Dearness Johnson. And he gets dropped. They get to him at the 16-yard line. And good work in there by Jeremy Kelly to upend him. So the first four possessions, some would just simply say, Ugh, what are you saying about the first four possessions? Uh, that's about right. I mean, Charlie Strong and company, his football team is jet lagged halfway across the country. Hopefully the flight gets here soon. Um, I, I'm caught between a few different things to yes. say, but I mean, Right now, they're not performing like they're expected to perform. They are so off, it's ridiculous. 3.07 to play in the opening quarter. Can they get it going? This is Tice. Slithers along the turf and picks up a couple on the first down run inside of three to play in the quarter. It was an 11-win team a year ago. Willie Taggart left, took the job at Oregon. Charlie Strong. A little less than three weeks after he was let go at Texas, was given the job. We'll learn a lot about his football team here, regardless of the way this game ends. Flowers in trouble. They get to him again. Jamal Scott was the first one. He had some help from the back. Finishing him off from the back side. That was Aguayo. Yep. Who was in there sort of press rushing, wasn't really trying to get in there too hard. Turn him back in and turn him right back into the former defensive back, now inside linebacker, Aguayo. Third and 11 now. Okay, here comes three rushes up front and a spy. No blitz, lots of coverage. Snap a bit off the mark. Flowers gathers, flings it out there. Incomplete. It would have been a first down right at the sticks there as he looked to Chris Barr. Incomplete. Well, a lot of flood of memories here with a lot of things that in football, you know, sort of can go wrong, do go wrong sometimes when you're on the road, especially mm -hmm. early in the year. Yep. You're a big favorite. You're not playing composed football. You're not, the hallmarks that you're known for are completely absent if you're South Florida. I think this is time for Charlie Strong's football team to do a little composure check. Here's Hernandez had the last one blocked and he gets this one away. Cottrell wants to field it, does. And he's taken down just shy of the 45 yard line. It's been big play Saturday so far for San Jose State, Randy. No, it has. Offensively, the key has been loves accuracy, gathers catches, gather blocks himself a punt. Then he gets the next touchdown on that short little hook. I mean, uh, just so far, the, this effort by Brent Brennan's football team. I know one thing, Brent Brennan's dad passed away a few years ago. Yeah. Uh, his mom, Beth, and his family is here, and their extended family with a bunch of friends and whatnot from the Bay Area. Yeah. 
His dad is looking down from upstairs, and he's got one heck of a smile on his face watching this so far. No question about it. Here is Zamor Ziggler. Forced out of bounds after a good pickup on first down. That's what you want. Five yards. Nico Sautel first to get there. Dietrich Nichols helping as well. And we've seen a pretty good effort out of this old line. We told you about him to start the game. They're getting nice chunks, but it's been Love's accuracy and poise that's been the difference. Fires again, and if that's a catch, a first down, they say it is a catch. Going down to the turf, to the knees, the ground. It was Justin Holmes for the first down. A couple of big catches for him so far today. Here's the pace they want to play at. This is Monroe, who's a big, strong, thick customer. He's a fullback. They use him at that running back spot at times. Dietrich Nichols, the tackle. Yeah, Andrew Souter, the offensive coordinator, wants a little more power. That's why he's got him Monroe playing running back. Here's a shot. Holmes up to get it. And they say no. They say incomplete. Justin Holmes. Is that Ronnie Higgins against him again out there? That was Hampton. That was Hampton. Hampton what a beautiful job of looking that ball, seeing it go into his hands, and then stripping that ball away. Yep, Mike Hampton, redshirt freshman out of Tampa, Florida. On the play. So third and seven here. They need the 32-yard line to convert. Pressure coming. Love gets it away. Ziegler makes a man miss, puts his head down. And he's wrestled down. He's going to be about a yard shy of the first down. You probably go for it here. Yep. <laughs> they did earlier. Go with your, whatever your big package is, that's what you bring in. You've got a tight end. You're going to have a fullback. And you're going to do it from a conventional under center snap. They do just that, Randy. And here's Love. Turns, hands off. And that's going to be... No first down. USF's defense, they give him a loss on the play. Charlie Strong's defense was just that strong. Yeah, that's exactly what this defense needed to do. Nothing spectacular up front. What they, one thing they didn't do, they didn't give up ground. They were able to finish him off there at the line of scrimmage. Well done. Josh Black in there leading the charge for yeah. the Bulls. Nice job by Black on the outside. Because the D-line did not allow any pen did not allow any blocking up front. They did a good job stuffing that. And when it tried to bounce, there was nowhere to go. So Quinton Flowers back on the field for USF. Ernest Johnson back in there as well. Ginda trying to finish him off after he was wrapped up. Pick up of three, the final seconds ticking away. USF, are they going to try to get a play away? They got 10 seconds. That's that's forever the way these offenses run. It is, yeah, as I was going to say. Now they're, just, they're just not going to run it. They're choosing not to run a play. They are, yep. So the number 19 team in the land, Charlie Strong's USF Bulls on the road, down 16 nothing to San Jose State. It's the end of the first quarter. You're watching College Football on CBS Sports Network, presented by Geico. Well, USF last season 11 and 2. Most wins in the history of their program now in year 21. Program records for total yards, rush yards, touchdowns, and points scored. They beat South Carolina for their fifth bowl win. Quinn Flowers was named the American Athletic Conference Player of the Year. And today, though, as we begin the second quarter with Randy Cross and John Schriffin, my name is Ben Holden. They are down 16 nothing here in San Jose. John, what are you hearing and seeing down on that USF sideline? Well, the players are trying to rally each other. Uh, defensive end Vincent Jackson was walking up and down the sideline telling his guys, he said, look, this ain't last year. Wake up, guys. But it doesn't look like there's any panic. It seems like they're really calm right now. They're hoping with these last few plays to get a little momentum and get back into this one. Ben? Thank, thank you, John. He's right. It's a quick strike offense. Here comes the blitz. It is. Flowers fakes the handoff, trying to get away from those two big fellas up front, and he easily picks up the first down there as he trots out of bounds to move the sticks on the first play of the opening 
offensive series here in quarter two for USF in the first quarter, Randy. Close to 50 plays between these two teams. Ernest Johnson with it. And Pace won't b bother this San Jose State defense. But South Florida's got to be about execution, not about pace. Plays that work, not volume. Totally agree. This one will work for him. Catch made by Valdez Scantling. Near side, another first down. Good pick up there for the Bulls. Forced out by Monroe. It's the first time in the game that USF has been across midfield. Flowers, good fake call for a block. Doesn't get it, but he got away. Escape still on his feet. He's a magic man at times. That was a nice piece of running there. Yeah, you saw that one move. City of Tampa hasn't seen anybody run like this since Freddie Solomon was at the University of Tampa. I like it. Back in the 70s. Same kind of runner, same size player. Here's Johnson. Leans and picks up the first down. So this looks more like USF. They're trying to get their offense in gear. A minute gone by in quarter number two. Yeah, you don't ask permission to take control. You grab the other team by the throat and you take control. Quentin Flowers. Man open. Finds him. Diving for the pylon. They signal touchdown. USF. Darnell Solomon with the grab. And the Bulls have found the end zone for the first time this season. Well, a nice pass protection. Had a little bit of a game inside with a linebacker coming inside. But Solomon, he is wide open right in that little window. See the window between the the cover corner and the safety over the top. That was perfect placement by uh, Quentin Flowers. And that's a quick little how do you do and bounce back for these Flor South Florida Bulls. 47th career touchdown pass for Flowers. The referee David Alvarez awaiting word. And the gentlemen on the sidelines, they will not go to review. They say they've seen enough in the replay booth. It's a good play. The touchdown stands. And Nadelman comes on and bangs it through. 16-7 now as the Bulls are on the board. And remember, this drive was birthed by that fourth down stop. Good defense by the Bulls, and they give it back to their star. And their star is Quentin Flowers. And Flowers in the offense did the job. Quentin Flowers, fair to say he was in full bloom last season, right? Here's what he did, Randy. I see what you did there. Yeah, that's right. 2016 American Conference Player of the Year. He set the single season records in total offense. First FBS quarterback in the state of Florida. That includes Tim Tebow yes. to rush for 1,000 yards. And he's got his team alive now with a touchdown to get him on the board. 19th ranked team in the country, USF. 16 to 7, though. They're in the wrong side of the score at this point, early on in the second quarter. You know, we always talk about matchups and what can, how can you get them, how can you take advantage of them. Take a look at William Osai right there. He's the outside linebacker, pass rush specialist. He's going to end up in a zone coverage. There's nobody behind him. I mean, that was good read by Quentin Flowers. He sees a linebacker standing out there. He sees Solomon, his receiver, get right between the DB and the linebacker. That's a gimme. And when you get that kind of thing, you've got to take advantage of that. Flowers, the senior. Solomon, the sophomore, both out of Miami. They love Solomon. They you know, the sky's the limit for him. Big play. Here's the tight end, the big play tight end that they they being San Jose State love. Horse collar is going to be called there on the pass to Oliver. That big tight end they like. Yeah, that was big time. And that was 
pretty much textbook horse collar. I mean, Oliver's a good sized fella. He's 6'5", about 245. You're sort of grabbing what you can to slow him down, but that's your first blush. Second blush is you grab something, and when you grab a jersey. Personal foul, horse collar, defense, number 13, 15-yard penalty from the end of the run. Automatic, first down. Because nowadays, you get that jersey is one thing. Mm -hmm. You don't have to get inside right. to get that pad anymore. It's a horse collar now if you do it with that jersey, especially when you look like you're about to start rolling up into the back of the legs. That's a nice call. Kajay Fullwood, senior out of Tampa, hurt in fall camp, the guilty one there. Here is Zamor Ziegler trying to hit a home run. He can do that, but he stopped here, but a good run and a first down run as Augie Sanchez made the stop on him. Quick they go, right back to Ziegler. And he'll get about four on the run. Hey, those guys with the sticks with the Mountain West logo on the top are having a devil of a time. Out. They're having a devil of a time keeping up with these offenses. <laughs> From the shotgun this time, over the middle, the tight end. Oh, the bobble, oh, man, coming up with a ball. Is Sawtell, they're saying interception. Nico Sawtell, they're saying a pick. They'll look at this and see if it's good, and we'll look back at it as well. Well, I think it was Oliver ends up cradling it and then tossing it in the air almost. Yeah. On a, a self-tip, like almost to himself. See, he's in there. He got an arm. The ball's tipped. That was that's good. That was pure want to by Sautel. Yep. He saw that ball in the air and he went after it, and he was the only guy that really had a chance of getting that ball once it left Oliver's hands. So, you know, Brent Brennan and his staff knows full well the dangers of playing this style of offense that Charlie Strong puts on the field. And Derek Odom, the defensive coordinator, now has got to get his guys. They need a big play big time. They do. USF with the football. Johnson took a hit, spun off it. And got a good pick up there. He took a heavy shot there initially from Jamal Scott, but the product of Immokalee, Florida. The Ernest Johnson waited his time behind Marlon Mack. Now it's his show in the backfield. Here's a pitch and catch, and that'll be another first down. It's Solomon once again from Quentin Flowers. Yeah, I think defensive backs, when they see a guy like Quentin Flowers run, they're a little surprised, A, at his accuracy, and B, at his arm strength. He's got a hose. Good job breaking through there. That was Ethan Aguayo, the young man you've talked about, kind of spying on Flowers here today. It's his assignment. Yeah, the perfect guy to get in there and control things inside, scramble or not. Flowers going to take a shot down the seam. Got him. Bobbled incomplete. incomplete. Yep, incomplete. Incomplete on the pass there. One of their two outstanding tight ends. That was Mitchell Wilcox. And if you ever wonder why people wear pads over their kidneys in football, right there. There's a great example as <laughs> why you wear pads over your kidneys in football if you're a receiver. Because invariably you get laid out like that. That was not a catch. Brings up third and nine. Bulls are one of six in that department. Now, San Jose State practiced all week about five, six seconds of holding the ball and adjusting and not dropping coverage. High snap. Flowers got it. Got away. Can he get the first down? Broke a tackle. He leans, and Quinton Flowers has it to the 35-yard line. An outstanding piece of running there by Flowers. How many arms tried to tackle Quentin Flowers? There's the second and third. There's the fourth that finally brings him down. Core strength and leg strength don't allow arm tackles. Flowers back to the air. Down to make the grab there. Marquez Valdez scantling the grab there. Now they're about due to go back over the top again here into the end zone. Getting close to the red zone. Good time to do it. Second short. Tice powers his way forward. First down, they'll move those chains, those 
Guys, as Randy said, getting a workout at the pace this game's being played at. I hope they have their own water guys over there for the, for the chain gang on the far side. Tice takes the handoff, has some room, got the middle, breaks through down inside of the five-yard line. It is a first and goal. Jermaine Kelly saved the touchdown there. Well, what a great decision. Because the blocking was there, but that foot in the ground made the biggest difference. That was why that gained all those yards. Here's Tice. Tice. Trying to burrow his way through there, and he stopped short of the goal line. Our red zone today being brought to you by Verizon. What USF did last season, 70%. Trailing in this ball game by nine, 16-7. Flowers fakes it, Quentin Flowers! Monroe got him down low there, and then got some help from the rest of the defense on that side to keep him from breaking the plane. It'll bring up third and goal. Nice rally to the ball there by San Jose. Derek Odom, their defensive coordinator, has to love that kind of effort from his defense. Now they got to figure out a way to seem so this quarterback in. How about that? They give it off there to the Ernest Johnson and Ginda blows it up. Ginda on a little bit of a stunt comes screaming through that B hole and around right into the backfield. They're going for it. Fourth down. Yeah. On the road, half asleep. Yeah, you go for I it. I would here. too. I would Absolutely. completely go for it. No question. Sorry to offend the kickers union, but I'd go for it too. Here's Flowers. Turns, hands off. Touchdown! Deonis Johnson powers his way in for USF with 9.25 to play in the half. Well, Johnson can say thank you to Cameron Ruff, Brooks Larkin, Marcus Norman, and Millich, Mitchell Wilcox, the tight end, because they smushed that <laughs> left side of the San Jose State defense. Nothing real sexy looking, not exactly big holes. It was suddenly the defense wasn't there. It was just soft. So it capped a 12-play drive, 69 yards, took three minutes and 31 seconds. And Dearness Johnson takes it in as San Jose State turning it over, the interception. And it's now a three-point game. Pretty quickly, San Jose State moving the ball, bobble the pass, bing, bang, boom. Neil on, he's good. It's a two-point game now. So Quentin Flowers, a couple of touchdown drives. This guy's back in it. Yeah, Josh Oliver juggles it into the air. Sautel dives through. Then South Florida gets plays from their big playmakers. And they got their second touchdown on the board. Then about the USF defense making the plays. First on that fourth down stop. Then Sautel gets this interception and Ben San Jose State's moving the ball on offense. It's just the defense for Charlie Strong has made some plays that have got his football team back in this game and reinvigorated again. Well, of course, he made his name as a defensive guy and years at Florida, defensive coordinator there. A couple of national championships with Urban Meyer. His team within two, they were down 16-0 if you're just joining us. Ben Holden, Randy Cross, John Schriffen, all of our great crew, Carlo Generini and Corey Fishman, the guys in the truck, our producer and director, and all of our crew appreciate their efforts here and what's right now a very good football game, a two-point lead for San Jose State. It's important right now for Brent Bennon's football team to take a collective deep breath. And, you know, led, led right here by their offensive coordinator, Andrew Satter, who's got his headset there with the glasses and the beard you see on the left side of the screen. He's got his guys just say, look, keep doing what you're doing. 
just don't shoot yourself in the foot. You've done that twice now. Mm -hmm. The fourth down, not getting it, that was your fault. The interception, that was your fault. You should have had that ball. Just execute and finish plays and drives. I like the style, I like the speed of it, of their offense. We have an idea, obviously, of what it would be like just from talking to them and knowing the game and where they've been. But when you see it up close and personal like we are now, and you, those of you watching, we hope you're enjoying the broadcast. It's fun to watch. Love under pressure. And they're going to get to him, and they'll drop him. And it'll be a two-yard loss on the play as Kirk Livingstone was one of those in there to get him. And yeah, nowhere really for Love to go. Once he puts his head down, cover that sucker up. Don't get stripped. And third and long, this plays right into South Florida's wheelhouse defensively. They will loose the, let loose the dogs and do a little man outside. Running of the Bulls. In this case, dogs, no horns. <laughs> there it is. They get it away. And they got a first down. They go to the tight end, Josh Oliver. What a conversion for Sounders offense there. Yeah, how many teams have a Y middle screen in the playbook? That's when you know you like the talent of your tight end, when you start putting in plays like that for your tight end. Great play call. And flags fly. Quick move. Looked like it, yep. David Alvarez, our referee. Hard and snap, false start. Offense, number 68, five-yard penalty. First down. Keone Taylor, center. Probably gave him one of those little fl those flinches centers will do every once in a while. Go quick, just don't go that quick. I've heard. <laughs> So it backs him up five, first and 15 for Love. He floats one out, Gators got it! What a throw! A beautiful throw! The adjustment by Gaither, first down, San Jose State. Yeah, the best part of this play is, is in the air by Gaither, because the ball is put on the outside of the defensive back and the outside of his receiver, and he's got to go all the way out there to make that play. 25-yard pickup on that pitch and catch to Bailey Gaither. Roberson, what, about a yard there? Yep. Now yeah, they give him two. They go quick. They fake. Love going to take another shot. Hartley knocked away. Hampton intercepted. Hampton knocked it away. And in the waiting hands of Devin Abraham. And Roberson better be careful over there. Pair number 20 is getting heated on that USF sideline. Uh, Devin Abraham, who's got great bloodlines, great genes. His father, Donnie, was an outstanding player in the NFL and now an assistant coach at Illinois. Yeah, and, and the Spartans did it again. Yep. Moved the ball, looks pretty good. And when you're in these style of games and that ball gets tipped, I can almost guarantee you, you're not going to be the team that comes up with it. Yeah. Good defensive play by the Bulls. Turns into an interception. That was... Mike nice, Hampton again. Yeah, Mike Hampton, nice effort out there by the corner. It's about his third big play. Mm -hmm. So another turnover for San Jose State. Two takeaways for USF, and it's led to seven of their 14 points so far. Nearing the midway point of the second quarter. And that one just simply dropped. Simply dropped there on the near side by Chris Barr. It's a good looking helmet. Well, it's kind of hard to miss, especially when the sun's out. It's like an eclipse earlier. I'll tell you, when they were, when they were <laughs> warming up, it was nuts. <laughs> so there's a awakening there you had expected to see from USF, and they have certainly come alive here as Dearness Johnson blasts his way close and looks like he's got a first down out across midfield. Yeah, and that's something Dearness Johnson can, can bring to the table. Not a huge dude. I mean, he's 5'10", about 205, 210. That's not a power back, but he runs out like it at times inside. Flowers taking a shot, catch made! Flag, it'll be a touchdown. Pass interference will be called. It's a touchdown as USF strikes. It's a Waka with a touchdown grab from Quinton Flowers. 
That didn't take them long. No, you give a team like this when they've got a little momentum, you give them, give them a reason to get bouncy and to get confident. There's no foul they will take them. Hold in. There's also play as a touchdown. Yeah, this is this. I'm not discounting the effort by South Florida and what they've done. But man, this is self-inflicted by by San Jose State. Yeah, they've had the offense going and the offense has turned it over a few times here and the defense it just has not had the stinger. Of course, Quentin Flowers there has been a little bit of a D stinger <laughs> the last couple of drives. <laughs> yes, yes. Sasha guilty on the pass interference there. It's now number 19, USF 21-16. Started with that play by Hampton. Abraham, the pick there. And then Quinton Flowers drops one into the waiting hands of Alaka. Touchdown, Quinton Flowers. And the Bulls on top. Well, what was a 16-0 lead for San Jose State is now a 21-16 lead for number 19, USF. Coming up on the Verizon Halftime Report, join Brent Stover, Houston Nutt, Christian Fourier from our CBS Sports Network studio in New York. We'll have a look at the opening week of college football plus first half stats and analysis. Randy, news and notes, your thoughts on those? Well, Bama's ranked number one again, but they've never won a national championship when they're ranked number one, so probably that's something worth noting about that. Sure, Nick will love to, to hear that. To start the season. Yeah, I bet he will. <laughs> and Kansas State, what a great story. 77-year-old yeah. Bill Snyder battling cancer and has a team ranked who's going to be tough. Got a very good quarterback. So San Jose State getting set to come back on the field. Their last three drives have not been good. The last two have ended in interceptions. But the drives themselves, they're moving the ball. That has been. They're yeah. running the ball. They're throwing the ball. They're just like Brent, Brent Brennan told us yesterday in meetings. They're not finishing. Yep. They're not finishing the play. They're not finishing the drive. And when that happens, Good things happen for the other guys. Here they go, back to work. Zamor Ziegler, USF's front. They are stout. A minimal gain of a yard. Jamon Thomas stepping up. As you see, the first-year head coach for San Jose State, Brent Brennan. Last three drives, and we mentioned two picks and a turnover on downs for them. Here's Love, rolls out, flings it, catch made Monroe, and he gets to the 30-yard line. Bring up a key third down and five for San Jose State with a clock under seven to play in the half. Remember, Deidre Sanat, the big defensive tackle for USF, yes. was ejected from the game for a for a, basically a spearing penalty. Yeah, you know, a hit on Love on the so their best defensive pass. tackle not in. False start, offense number 62, five yard penalty. Still third down. And that's the second time this veteran offensive line has made that mistake. First time around, it was the center. Second time around, it's the guard. That one on Jeremiah Coloni. Andrew Sounder, the offensive coordinator, looking on. Third and 10 now. Heat coming. Love gets it into the hands of Hartley. Where's the spot? It's short. Yep, it is. It's about a football short. Nice job taking the legs out there of Hartley. He could not twist and put that ball forward. It's a big decision. They're going to go for They're it. They're going for it. Yeah. Would you go for it here? Yeah, I mean, yeah. You would. New coach. Yep. Had a lead. Want to kill some momentum. Yep. I'm with you on that. Although they're just letting the play clock run down. This looks like they're going to wind it down. and talk it over as they come to the sideline. 5.43 to play until halftime. Fourth and one facing San Jose State. And their new offensive coordinator, Andrew Stoner. And you've seen the Mountain West a lot over the years. I've seen a lot more this year, but a look back at last year. I saw him last year was amazing at Northern Illinois. What are your thoughts on these uh, bullet points here? Oh, yes. Uh, Donnell Pumphrey last year was amazing finishing his career with all those yards. Wyoming is going to be, I think, the story of the league this year and how Allen plays at quarterback because Josh Allen's got a chance 
to put up some pretty ridiculous numbers in that pro style offense. And they had seven bowl teams last yeah. year. People didn't talk too much about that. But uh, this is a league that's finding their legs as a league. Because somebody every year out of that group of six has to be the one that plays in those New Year's Day games. Captures people's imaginations. You know, people talked about South Florida maybe being that team this year. Can they come out of a group of five conference and, and capture imagination? But, you know, maybe that's Boise coming out of this, this league, out of the Mountain West this year. So there's been a new wrinkle now. They're reviewing this spot, Randy. Seeing that, what do you think? Well, if, if that is right where the stick is, right in the middle of that line, mm -hmm. I still think he's just short. Hampton on the tackle yeah. there against Trey Hartley. Boy, Hampton is, is really showing out here in this first game of the year, doing a wonderful job out there at corner. Yes, he is. He's been all over the field. Well, they've had him now at corner. Remember, this is a defense yeah. that really highlighted Dietrich Nichols. Mm -hmm. Number three for them, a senior out of Miami. But he's now in the slot, slot slash nickel position. Another look to see. He circles back. He gets oh. the ball in his arms. He circles back, but the key was the legs. I think Hampton took out those legs, and he was down before he had a chance to stretch back out. See, so watch where the leg goes down there. Right. Before that elbow, before anything else goes down. So right. I don't think the ball ever gets near the back, even gets near the 35. Calling the field just short of the first down by a maybe the length of the football. I'm with you, Randy. I, I think they're short. I think they have it right. But they're going to make sure on this with the guys upstairs on the press level here at Seth Q Stadium. And nice job by Brent Brennan and his staff mm -hmm. of not hurrying, of sort of reminding each other about that new rule that they can challenge the spot or they, they can review the spot. Correct. Calling that timeout. Andrew Souter, the offensive coordinator, a probably has a play fired up, ready to go. My guess is after this, if they don't make this a first down, they'll punt the ball. Ball right now is just shy of the 35-yard line. Here's Brent Brennan. First game for him as a head coach. Charlie Strong, his first game as head coach of USF. Mike Love in that defense. They have stepped it up here in the second quarter. Uh, this is not, we already tested it a couple times. This isn't Brent Brennan's first uh, San Jose State rodeo as far as football. He Correct. not only coached here, he grew up as a kid. His dad played football here in the late 60s. Mm -hmm. And there used to be fields over here on the other side of the stadium where they tailgated and played parking lot football and whatnot. So he's familiar about After being a Spartan. Rolling on the field stands, clock operator. So you and I agree on it. They got the call right. They're going to bring on the punt team, as you said, and out comes Carrizoza. So Charlie Strong's defense flexing its muscle again. They come up with a big stop. Real important. Not only you can make good contact and have a good kick here, you can't have a big return. The last thing you want if you're San Jose State is a signature play against you. And the first thing you want if you're South Florida here to really ramp up the momentum on your sideline is a 10, 15, 20 yard plus return in this situation to give Quentin Flowers better field position. Fullwood, the deep man, back at his 16 yard line for USF. Carrizoza. Only to punt, they're having issues with the clock. In the stadium. We were ready to go momentarily. I think I read somewhere in the offseason they were thinking about making college football a faster game. That was, that was running through my mind, too. Yeah, I thought so. <laughs> Forward. 
Fair catch at the 22-yard line. 5.57 to play in this first half. Number 19, USF, on top with the ball. We come back. Welcome back here to San Jose State University as USF is now on top 21 to 16. You were taking a look at running back coach Alonzo Carter for San Jose State University. But take a look at this video that has now gone viral. Millions of people have looked at this video already. It was after practice and coach Brendan surprised the team and decided to play. You can't touch this. Well, Alonzo Carter was actually a dancer for MC Hammer. MC Hammer is actually here in the stadium today. He had the moves before the game. He still has the moves. This guy's impressive, and the, and the team obviously loved it. Thanks, John. That's great. Can't touch this. Hammer time. That's awesome. USF back to work here with 550 and counting in this first half. So this is pregame. Here's Alonzo Carter pregame. I mean, the, the oldest member of this staff is 45 years old. The head coach. So, yeah, yeah. And they really relate well with these young kids. Look, I'm no marketing genius, but I play that as your walkout song when you're home. <laughs> There's a flag on that pass downfield looking for Solomon again. Sachere looking at the field judge saying, really? If there was a flag on that, that was a that was a left hand reaching back. Pass interference, defense, number 21, 15 yard penalty, and both First running down. side by side. Watch the hands, right there. Yep. Not much, you know. It's not gigantic, but, but it does not take much. You get those little tugs. You play out there on the corner. That's Fantasy Island out there. You got to be one heck of a. You got to have no memory too. Darius Tice in the backfield next to Quentin Flowers. Flowers now looking far side, now in trouble, got away on the run, flings it. Solomon made the catch. Another flag comes in. They talked about Solomon and how high of a ceiling they believe he's got. That was a nice looking grab. We'll have to check the penalty though first. Those defensive ends for San Jose State between Roberts and Bryson Bridges. You mean Boogie? Boogie. <laughs> Boogie's got a boogie a little bit better because Boogie's <laughs> boogie is not quite as boogie-ish as Quinton's. Out of bounds and touch a pass. Loss it down. In between the breakup of the yes. microphone, you can't be the first player to touch it if you go out of bounds, then come back in. Out of bounds. See that feet? Out of bounds. Yes. Then he catches it. Mm, questionable if he ever really established himself back in. But the point yeah. is, he went out of bounds and he was the first one to come back in and touch it. So that's a loss of down and yards. Ruling on the field, illegal touching. Tice is in the backfield now on second and 10 with Flowers. Tice gets it. Still on his feet, Darius Tice nearly got the first down. How about that? Yeah, they got a couple running backs. We talked about Dearness Johnson and now Darius Tice. These are not power backs. But tell that to San Jose State's defense that these 205, 210 pound running backs aren't powerful. They give him the first down. So great effort from Darius Tice as Dearness Johnson's back in. Cousin of Edger and James. Is Johnson. And he gets the call here, does Dearness Johnson. Spins and slithers through there for a pickup of close to five yards. He just joining us. San Jose State led 16 0 in this game. Charlie Strong's team, 19th ranked team in the country, has scored three straight touchdowns since then. Flowers getting to him there and dropping him was. Aguayo bridges in there as well. Yeah, so there was so what you're trying to say is there was about a one quarter time difference between Tampa <laughs> and San Jose, and it took them a while to catch up, huh? Yeah, because this is the South Florida. Florida team. This is the South Florida team we were expecting to see, and that is a nice play on third down. 
Do they go for it here? I don't think there's any reason not to. Yeah, I would agree with you. In fact, spread, you spread them out, the more the better. They're going to have a tight end, but you've got two running backs. Movement yep. might change the decision now. That's about to be a punt. Yes. All start. Fence. That's just about everybody but the center. <laughs> so everybody but Mike Galati, who was in at center, went. So that'll bring on the punter for USF. Very good one he is in Hernandez. Ty Cottrell waiting at his 10-yard line, hoping to get a return chance here. Instead, goes into the corner, and what a punt! That's a coffin corner there, Randy Cross. Oh, how good is this wow. kid at aiming it and killing it inside the five? 45-yard punt, his first punt of the day. Angled out of bounds. This one, he kicks end over end, and he actually bites it and kills it in there at the one yard line. Man, that's some nice camera work, isn't it? How about the Look golf swing? Simulating the left handed wedge. I love it. Looks like Phil Nicholson. Beautiful. Hernandez transferred from Florida State in the summer of 2016, and last year, 41.2 per punt. Beautiful job to pin San Jose State inside of their own one. Most important possession San Jose State's had today is this one right here. They have got to get a first down. Roberson gets it. Short pickup on first down. Mike Love among those in there. Sawtell in there to help out as well. Well, now at least you got a little bit of room. You're out mm -hmm. past the four yard line. But uh, first down here is huge, not only for your punt team, but just from the momentum of this game, because right now you're going uphill. And again, bring up a third and about four. Roberson on the carry again, Augie Sanchez. Came over with the ball, made the tackle, but he fumble on the play. Third and three. If, I, if I'm South Florida, I'm keeping an eye on Oliver down here. The tight end and lining up a receiver. You nailed that. There's a flag on the play, and he can't make the catch. Flag on the near side, about the seven-yard line. And the indication is offsides against USF. Offside. Defense, number 96 in the neutral zone at the snap. Five-yard penalty, the yards results in a first down. Yeah, he was, he was off by a good bit. Well, here's that first down I talked about. Exactly. That is important. Any way you can get it, right? Penalty, whatever it takes. Yeah. And down, nearly taken back by Reeves. Greg Reeves who days ago was given a scholarship yeah. for his hard work. What a way to add to a great summer for Greg Reeves. This would have been threw the ball right into his arms. Walked onto the team two years ago in 2015. Great story of success. Monroe took his eyes off it incomplete. Here's a look back. One more time. Watch yes. Reeves and how big his eyes get. Oh, right there. That's a lineman's dream. I don't care if you're a D lineman or an O lineman. <laughs> you got a chance to actually have the ball. Red shirt sophomore out of Bradenton, Florida, Manatee High School. They produced their fair share of college players. And Hartley, the intended target. Hampton was in the neighborhood again. Along with Dietrich Nichols, they'll bring on the punt team with two and a half to play in the half, will the Spartans. You know, if you're Brent Brennan, you wanted to keep getting first downs. You wanted to keep moving the ball. But remember where they took over. I mean, they were inside the one-yard line. Yeah. So getting to where they are now, having a chance to get their kicker to boom one out of here. Again, remember what we said. 
it's got to be hang time. You don't want a return ball in these situations. You have two and a half minutes left, which is forever for Quentin Flowers. There is Oza. And that hit the USF player running downfield. Won't affect the play any. Out of bounds at the midfield line after a 37 yard punt. Covering everything from the field through fantasy. Tops puts a fresh spin on your football pregame show. Join our team of experts Wednesday night at 7 Eastern for that other pregame show's season preview right here in the 24 hour home of CBS Sports. Quentin Flowers, his work today. Sort of a wake up call. This second quarter didn't really recognize the South Florida team in the first quarter. But this second quarter and two and two minutes and 22 seconds is forever for this offense. Yes, it is. A start on the ground. Dearness Johnson trying to work his way down the line. Gets a block, gets outside. Here goes Dearness Johnson. Stays in bounds, dives. And no signal yet. They say touchdown on the play. You can be sure they're going to look at this one. But what a play if it stands by Dearness Johnson, a 50-yard run. Tyree McCants with a huge block, Randy. Watch once he starts bouncing from now. Count him. One, two, three, four. Spartans gone. Now they're chasing. Does he get out of bounds? No. no. Oh. Nope. That's a touchdown. That's a thing of beauty. They take his legs out, but he reaches the ball. The legs go sideways. The ball went straight, and the yes. ball get the pylon. That was something. That was a work of art by Johnson. Numbers for Dearness Johnson so far today after that 50-yard run to the house. 13 shy of 100 in the game. Very good hands. Yeah, just pure instinct. Yeah. There was nothing there initially. He just bounced that thing around everybody. Point after. Bit of an adventure, but they get it up and through. And it's 28 to 16 now. Number 19, USF on top. After a 16-0 deficit. This is McCants. Look at McCants. 5'11, 235. He gets out there. He's got some good speed. He gets one. He gets two. Oh, that's the setup. That's the reason Johnson scores. Yeah. Great get by the truck downstairs. Seeing that in the replay. McCants first goes inside, then comes back outside and gets himself an ear holder on Andre Shasher. He was reaching for him, was Andre. And got knocked out of bounds by McCants. So just like that, 28-16 USF, 2-10 remaining in the first half. 28 straight points. I won't say unanswered because I don't like that phrase in sports. You've earned these 28 points. They've scored 28 straight points here. And as you said, they look like the USF team. We were figuring we'd see and everybody else saw their fans had seen last year. Big possession here for San Jose State. Ziegler shy of the 20 on the run back. So Josh Love in the offense with 2.05 and two timeouts remaining will come back onto the field for San Jose State. And really, what's happened here? You say unanswered, don't like it. Brent Brennan and his offense have functioned all right. Yeah. I just but, don't like the phrase. But they've been, they're sort of accomplices to those 28 True. points. True. They've had turnovers in there. They've had execution problems in there. Um, you got to give them a little bit of assist because they only got one first down. Yeah. I know they said that's all they need, but right. you got to execute against this style of offense on the other side. So here they go to Monroe, the bigger of the three backs. We try Brandon Monroe here. Two timeouts, clock running for San Jose State with a minute 50 to play in half. Now, if you're playing pace, and, and notice they're not pace right here. They're in no hurry to right. run play, run play, run play. But the only time it's happened the today with them, right? The last thing they want to do is give the ball back to South Florida. 
And you see what happened in the game. 16 straight points in the opening quarter, 28 straight in the second. Here's Monroe, nice cut back there. Got another block. He's taken down. Nice open field tackle there by Mazzy Wilkins. And Monroe's got a decent little wiggle at 6'1", about 243. Andrew, Sa Andrew Satter talked about, we mentioned it earlier in the game, they want a little more power back in this uh -huh. style of offense. Defensive coordinator, coordinator Brian Jean-Marie with the, what do you call that? Lime green? Lime green? Yeah. That's Volt, kind of, Volt, kind of Volt green? Hip, hip green. Minute 20 to go. And a 12-point lead for USF. Third and five. If USF's got two timeouts. San Jose's got all theirs left. Don't expect San Jose State to be in too big of a hurry to burn any of them anytime soon. Ninety-three plays from scrimmage so far in the game. On pace for a couple hundred. Knocked away and complete. It was Dietrich Nichols on the coverage over there on Cottrell. Punt team for San Jose State comes on with a minute 16 to play in the half. We're back to that same story from the last possession. Minute and 16 seconds. Not much for they a play can't do. like Quentin Flowers. The entire playbook is open. This is not, you know, burning timeouts. This is not only, you know, sideline routes for them. Their whole offense is there. Can't have a return. Carrizoza got it away. Fullwood. Fair catch at the 33-yard line. 70 seconds remaining in the half for Charlie Strong's offense. 43 yards on that punt, Randy. And Charlie Strong's football team has waken up with aces, I mean, <laughs> compared to what they were like early. Early in the game, it looked like they flew in today. Yeah, I mean, and this is college football, so, you know, when that happens, Charlie knows, people look at the coaches. They go, sure. hey, they weren't ready to play. Right. But they're still 18 to 21-year-old kids, right. a bunch of which have never even been this far in the country. Sure. They just weren't flat ready, but they are more than ready now. They look good. Dumped off to Tice. Dropped at the 37-yard line by Ethan Aguayo. Clock moving. Two timeouts remaining for USF and Quinton Flowers. They don't, lead by 12. Don't lose contain. Flowers. And near sideline is going to be a flag called on Dakari Monroe as they were looking to Valdez Scantling. I was looking right at that. I'm not sure that was pass interference or if there was any kind of a push or hold. It happened after Valdez Scantling was out of bounds. Defense, number 19, 15-yard penalty and an automatic. First down. Let's take a look. Yeah, I really, didn't really see it on there. Sell that hat. See the hat on the ground? Yes. That means the, see, the guy ran out of bounds. They're always going to mark that. First and 10. From the 47. 48 long seconds left. Flowers, plenty of time. Great protection now. It breaks down a little bit. Off his back foot, just throws it away in the direction of Marquez Valdez Scantling. Jamal Scott getting in there on the pressure. You saw a little bit of what we talked to Derek Odom, the defensive coordinator from San Jose State, about. You know, as he's yelling signals into his team on the uh, on the field, was you know during practice, five to six seconds of every drill, he had the quarterback that was emulating Flowers just run, yeah. run around, make them stay with their coverage, so that guys won't break coverage just because the quarterback's running. Terrell Carter was the young man that played Quentin Flowers. Here's a pass, and incomplete. Nicely done there. Outstanding work by Jermaine Kelly. And the coverage there, 33 seconds to go, third and 10 upcoming. I think, I think in that case, 
Jermaine Kelly is lucky the, the official was on the other side of the receiver's body and didn't see that left arm. <laughs> I didn't see the Blue Jay that just flying, flew into our booth until the last second. It's the ones you don't see that get you. Third and ten. <laughs> that doesn't happen every day. That color doesn't match on your pink shirt either. <laughs> Third and ten. Here's Flowers. Got a bunch of real estate. Slides, though, as they converged on it. Aguayo was spying yep. 31, that inside linebacker, and he just reached out and tripped up Quentin Flowers. That's a nice job because you're uh, – you're going from flat foot to a sprint to the sideline with one of the quicker players out there. Yep, one of the quicker ones in the country in Quentin Flowers. Need him in their kicker, but they're not going to bring him on. They're just going to let the time run down. You know, he wanted to kick one, but that would have been 60 plus. So, Randy, Quentin Flowers, number 19 USF. They'll get the ball to begin the second half on top by 12. That's the end of the first half with the score. Number 19, USF, 28, San Jose State, 16. After the break, we'll send you back to our CBS Sports Network studio for the Verizon Halftime Report. Halftime continues here from SefQ Stadium in San Jose, California. Number 19, USF on top of San Jose State by 12. And take a look now at our Bud Light game summary. Those two highlighted lines, the real turning points in this game so far. Quentin Flowers, 158 total yards. He's passed for two touchdowns. Josh Love, 13 of 26, but two costly interceptions. And USF, 28 straight points to come back from 16 nothing down. Did the number 19 team in the nation, USF. Randy Cross will rejoin me. More of halftime coming your way right after this from San Jose. Put together by the folks in our tape room. 19th ranked USF on top here at halftime. 28 to 16 on top of San Jose State. We welcome you upstairs to our broadcast position alongside the College Football Hall of Famer and three-time Super Bowl champ for the 49ers, Randy Cross. My name is Ben Holden. And it was really a tale of two quarters, I guess, in this first half, right, Randy? Well, it really was. I mean, let's be honest, Florida, South Florida was not really ready to go at the beginning of this game. And, and San Jose State had the enthusiasm, had the crowd, had everything going their way. And it was all San Jose State early. But then they stopped finishing drives. They stopped finishing plays. And those turned into turnovers. Or they turned into like on a fourth down stop. South Florida getting the ball back. And when you're playing with a little box of dynamite known as Quentin Flowers, <laughs> you can't give him that many chances. I like that. Little box of dynamite. There's a great touchdown. That was a big box of dynamite from Dearness Johnson. And your second half adjustments, what are they starting with Charlie Strong's guys? Pretty, pretty simple for South Florida. The same as in the first half. Just keep going at it. They, they weren't aggressive in the first quarter. They weren't dictating. Dictate and be aggressive. For San Jose State, stop making those mistakes and finish the plays and finish the drives. I mean, if they finish some of these drives, they're moving the ball well enough to score some more points. But they keep making these plays and these self-inflicted wounds. This really won't end well for them. All right, very good. So we're set to go here from SefQ Stadium to begin this third quarter. USF, they won the toss. They deferred. They will get the ball to begin the second half with Randy Cross up in the booth. My name is Ben Holden. John Schriffen down on the field. Carlo Gennarini, our producer, and Corey Fishman, our director today. All of our great crew appreciate all they do for us to make our broadcast possible. It's good to have you with us wherever you're watching this afternoon or tonight if you're in 
in Central or Eastern time zones. USF, good return out across the 20 yard line by Dearness Johnson. And penalty flag is down on the field. Kicking team, number 26. Five yard penalty, will re-kick. All right, so the word from our referee, David Alvarez. Offsides call, there's Charlie Strong, first game as USF's head coach. Thrilled to be in the spot he's in. I would be too if I'm a coach. He's got a very oh, yeah. good football team. Boy, he spent three years at Texas and he left Tom Herman in pretty good stead, that football program in Texas. They're gonna be good this year because of two things. Herman's a good football coach and Charlie left him a lot of talent. Um, and I think he got us this job at South Florida. What was it, 19 days, 18 days? He between, said 19, he told us, yeah. Between being fired and getting this job, it was a great move by South Florida to lock him in. Knows the state of Florida obviously very well from his time in Gainesville. Defensive coordinator and coached many other spots at Florida in his tenure there. And fair catch taken at the 25 yard line by Elkana Dillon down to John Schriffen who has some updates for us. John, what do you got? Well, I got a chance to speak with both head coaches. I'll start with USF's Charlie Strong. He said in the first half, we just weren't playing well in that first quarter. So I asked him, what did you tell your team to actually get back into this game? And he gave me this look and I said, okay, give me the clean version. He said, I basically told my guys, get going. He was happy how the way they responded and his defense is playing well. As for the other side, San Jose State coach Brent Brennan said, really what happened, the way they lost the momentum was that Quinton Flowers was breaking a lot of tackles. So he feels like if their defense can contain him here in the second half, they can get momentum back and get back into this game. A lot easier said than done, guys. Thanks, John. Outstanding. Good play there up front. Uh, it's great work by Latu up front there, the big nose guard. Yeah, Selassie, Selassie Latu, 6'2", about three and a quarter. The key to that contain that John was just talking about with Charlie, Charlie Strong, mm -hmm. uh, that's got to be done by the ends. That's got to be Boogie, Boogie Roberts and Bryson Bridges. <laughs> Boogie take a shot downfield. Sacheray on the coverage, and it's incomplete. So here's the last eight possessions of the yeah, first half. You read that right, by the way. Last eight yes, possessions. Yes, I double-checked. Between these two teams, they ran 98 plays in that two-hour first half. That was just the 100th play. <laughs> wow. I thought there was an initiative to speed up games this year. Whatever it is. And just think, they didn't throw a bomb into the end zone when time was running out in the first half. Yep. They just let the clock run out and ran inside. Could have had 99. Third down and 11 here facing Quentin Flowers. And USF. Pocket closes a little bit, flings it down there, and it's incomplete double coverage coming over to help out. McKnight was on the coverage there on the tight end. Wilcox incomplete. Yeah, nice job by Maurice McKnight, number 10. Watch him come in. You're thinking about trying to make that catch. You start bobbling that ball. Here comes the safety. You, you know there's a smackdown coming. <laughs> Hernandez on the punt, 40 seconds into this third quarter. And a beauty put inside of the one. And the lefty, another good punt. Cottrell back to the 20 to field it. This kid can fly, he's got a save, and he got grabbed with like a face mask. Looks like he had him. No Must flag. Must have been the throat. Yeah, I don't see a flag, Randy. Nate Ferguson was the guy that got down there like he was shot out of a cannon. Now watch as he runs straight up the field. The left arm comes in. Yep. That is a pure, clean tackle. Mm -hmm. I didn't see, I mean, the, the head turns as he's going down, but that's more the momentum of getting knocked down after running that fast straight ahead. That's old school, right? That's pretty good, pretty good play, pretty good job. Here's Josh Love. Pressure off the end, and Roberson buried. They got him for a two-yard loss. Greg Reeves 
And Nico Sotel in on the stop nice there. Job, nice job, too, by Mazzy uh, Wilkins coming uh -huh. from that corner position on that corner blitz. Here they go quickly. Roberson got to see him. Still on his feet. Dunk a tackle. He's got the first down. Up to the 49-yard line. Now we've seen this from San Jose State in the second quarter. The key, you gotta, you gotta finish this play. Roberson finishes the play really well. He gets the positive yard, but finish the drive. Finish the series. That's gonna be the difference. 14-yard pickup on that last run, and a good pickup here. And that was something in, in our meetings with Brent Brennan yesterday, he said, in watching the tape, obviously he wasn't here. They have to do, and you've talked yeah. about that a couple times. Well, today. he made a great point. He goes, you know, 15, 20 plays, I'm probably not here. Correct. But that's the thing they hadn't learned to do. And let's see if he can teach him in short order how to do that. They know it. I mean, these guys, even the the least experienced football player has been playing half a dozen years sure. for Brent Brennan. You know, he's not, well, not for him because he just got here, but. <laughs> you know, they've been playing football that long. Sure. So. Spartans are 3 of 11 on third down. They need three here to convert. Pressure coming. They break the house. Oh, you mess with the balls, and you get that. You get the horns right upside the head from Charlie Strong. Let's listen. Wow. You know, Augie gave up his body. Augie Sanchez inside gave up his body, but that tackle, that obliteration was made inside by Juwan Brown. Indeed. Fifth tackle for loss for Strong's defense. Fourth and nine now is... Play is halted on the field. Charlie's got a question. But remember that thing about finishing. And, yeah. and they've heard finishing their entire life, these players at San Jose State. Mm -hmm. So Brent Brennan's not telling them anything new. But until you f do it and it pays off, it never really sinks in. It becomes a cliche. Then once you do it and you know what it's like, then it becomes a way of doing business. It becomes a way of playing football. And that's the challenge that you know this young football coach is going to face with his football team is convincing these guys that it's, he's not trying to get them to do, perform coaches' slogans. He's got a way for them to win. This team had a 16-0 lead early in this game. 28 straight points for number 19, USF. Good punt. Can they get down there to down it? They're going to inside of the five-yard line. Carrizoza with a great punt. Early on in the third, Quentin Flowers, the Bulls, get it when we come back. College football on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by Acura. Precision crafted performance by Phillips 66. Proud to be here. And by Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. Reese's, perfect. A look there at all the notable head coaching changes in the FBS this season from Lane Kiffin to P.J. Fleck, Lincoln Riley, Tom Herman, Willie Taggart, and two guys here in new head coaching roles at their respective schools. Yeah, Willie Taggart moves on to Oregon, and that we've mentioned earlier, that opens up this slot at South Florida for a guy that had tremendous success in the group of five at Louisville with Teddy Bridgewater, and the key of that was recruiting South Florida. Yes. I mean, getting him out of South Florida was a huge coup. And off there to Dearness Johnson. And a four-yard pickup. You educated me on where Johnson's from when we talked earlier in the week. I did not know where Immokalee, Florida it was exactly. And it's amazing the amount of players on this team and the players that have come out of there. Oh, it's, 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 uh, it's utterly amazing. The first time I really got initiated into it was, was doing Indianapolis Colts game when Edger and James got 
Uh, he broke my heart. UCLA was number one in the country towards the end of the year there. Miami Went beat to him. Miami and got yeah. beat by Miami. He goes to the Colts. And I'm talking to him, yeah, I'm going, where the hell is that? Where is Mock in Florida? <laughs> he showed it to me on a map and told me some amazing stories. It's good stuff. And it's a real fraternity now, too, yeah. because he spends time down there. And these kids that go to major colleges and play football, they see Edger and James. He works out with them, and he's around. Yep. Good stuff. Timeout was taken there by San Jose State. The third and three upcoming down to John Schriffen, who's got an injury update for us. John. Yeah, some bad news for San Jose State. Coach Brennan wanted his guys to tackle better, but one of their linebackers is currently out of the game right now. Number 23, Trayvon Bieria. He was down on the ground laying on his back for about five minutes as the medical staff was working on his right knee. He had to be helped up off the ground. He's currently on the bench as they're still working on his right leg. No word as to if he is returning, but it doesn't look good right now for him. Guys. Thanks for the update, John. And and involved in some plays for them today. So what next man up, I suppose, as the old adage goes, right? Well, there's absolutely no choice. You've got 12 games left after yep. this, which might sound funny, but yes, San Jose State has 13 games this year. Yeah. Third and three for Quentin Flowers and USF. Five wide as Dearness Johnson completes it. Flowers going to keep it. And he's going to be short. Jamal Scott, who's made a handful of big tackles here today, Randy. Yeah, Jamal Scott, he's coming through on a game from the outside. They're stunning inside of him, and he's just blazing off the edge and takes the legs right away from Quentin Flowers. Eric Odom, high praise for him yesterday. Talking about his athleticism and what he did at the junior college level, now doing it at the FBS level. Yeah, talk about an unknown quantity for a, for a staff from the West East Coast coming out here. They don't know much about these junior college kids in California. Good point. The lefty Hernandez. And a fair catch made at the 48 yard line. They're going to mark it early on in this third quarter. Number 19 USF on top by 12 after a 39 yard punt. He was one of the guys today. To get a great effort today, too. So with that great effort, we're getting ready to award him a scholarship. Take a look now at who's driven to succeed. Brought to us tonight by Acura Greg Reeves. That was a few days ago, getting a scholarship from head coach Charlie Strong. What he did last season, put in all the hard work, and great to see a young man get rewarded, Randy. And he's earned it. Uh, it really is. It's always, and there's so many of these stories, but it's worth showing every single time it happens. Some big plays in this game. Nearly a touchdown. And back up five yards. It'll be first and 15. Staff infraction, number 68 of the offense, five yard penalty, still first down. You get that scholarship, you keep making plays like crazy, like he did, almost scoring a touchdown. He might get a chance to do it again. Yep. There's a toss to Hacker, a young man they told us about yesterday. Might see some time. Here's the play we're referring to. Boy, that was close. That was, I mean, that was, he'll see that one in his sleep tonight later on. Love. Fires incomplete looking for Justin Holmes. Mazzy Wilkins there to break it up. Yeah, Wilkins, nice close on the ball. Nice close on the receiver. Get, look at that hand come in, that left hand. That's an instance there. And, you know, Brent Brennan's wide receiver coach at Oregon State for several years. A lot of great receivers. And dump it off here. This is Packer. Shove Gator down. And He's wrapped up and dropped in a hurry. And it was Jamon Thomas that got him. Yeah, Packer's a pretty good-sized kid. I mean, he's 225 pounds. 
And again, another walk-on. That's one thing they had to increase. They only had a couple of walk-ons in the spring, and by the time the fall came around, they had somewhere in the 20, 22 walk-ons to get their numbers up. Here come the Bulls. High punt. Wow. Big time leg. Can they get it? Sassery tried to save it. After a booming punt of 52 from Carrizoza. So they'll bring that one out to the 20 yard line. Still early on in the third quarter, number 19, USF on top, still 28 16. CBS Sports Network brings you more college football action Thursday. Back-to-back -back games come your way. It starts with a battle in Sunshine State as FIU travels to Orlando to take on UCF. It'll be the debut of former Georgia quarterback Aaron Murray. That one's at 6 Eastern, presented by Geico, followed by Memphis and Louisiana Monroe at 9.15 right here in the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. And Randy, your thoughts on the American and well, what happened in that conference last year? You see it a lot. It was a great, it was a great year, fantastic year for the Bulls, who finished 11 and two and somehow managed not to be in that championship game. Again, self-inflicted problems, which hopefully for them they they solve that problem this season. See what transpires. The team is built, and this young man, an absolute stud. Trayvon Bieria going off to get some medical attention. 14-yard run on that play by Quentin Flowers. Tough to see, but it's part of the game. Yeah, they were working more on his quad, his, his thigh, than they were his knee, so hopefully it's not the knee. Let's hope. Flowers taking a shot. Well, oh, there's Scantling down there. Got it. Catch is made. Big pick up there. He's a dangerous weapon is Marquez Valdez Scantling. He beat Kelly. Yeah, nothing like uh, having your six foot five by 205 pound wide receiver be able to run by the corner. This is, I mean, I, I think this kid's got some serious uh, stats in his future. Gain of 50 on the pass. Now Flowers comes back, and this is where he can really get you yeah. and throw that strike. Then he can do that with his legs. What do you well, call him? A little box there, a box of dynamite? A little box of dynamite, yeah. <laughs> I like it. Well, he's got the quickness. He's got the speed. You start running sideline to sideline, you're going to miss him. And off to Tice. Not much there. It's going to be third and about a yard. Among those in there, Cameron Woodard. The clog up the middle there. And I wasn't kidding earlier when I mentioned, you know, Freddie Solomon in the context of Tampa. Yeah, he no, went, I know he, you were. Yeah, he went to the University of Tampa. He ran the option back then, back in the early 70s. Yeah. And he was a heck of a heck of a quarterback who became a wide receiver in the pros. He was a teammate at San Francisco. Yes, I remember. Won him. a couple Super Bowl rings. Yep. Marcus Norman, the one they're tending to, and valuable valuable part of their offensive line redshirt sophomore that's a good sign well, he's obviously in some pain but walking for the time being let's look back randy there he is at right tackle moving into the pile running backs usually fall on the back of linemen's legs or the pile or the pile finds hit finds him I'm not sure. Maybe he was cramping a little bit there because he yeah. kind of seized up in general. Yeah. A little stiff-legged, that's for sure. No doubt about it. Temperature at kickoff was 92, which is nothing new to. Hey, he's 6'6", 310. USF. Yeah. Good sized fella. Yep. It's a big young man. Temp now 84. It's a third and a yard needed here for the Bulls' offense. Tice trying to. Burrow is way nice in the there. Number eight, Owen Roberts, number nine, Bryce Richards on top of tackle. So it's fourth down. They didn't get it. Waiting and to see where the spot was, Randy. And they're just going. Leading by 12, 7.50 to go in this third quarter. Flowers, Tice, got some room to the outside. Can he get to the pylon and get in there? Darius Tice is shy of the goal line but they get the first down down to the one that's going to be first and about a football he just gets in didn't look like he got there 
His feet got there. The only problem is the ball has to score. Right. Another that'll, another that'll injured be, USF player down. Sorry, Randy. That'll be fun in the meeting rooms. Oh, yeah. And somebody points that out to him when they're watching the tapes. And a San Jose State player down as well. First down. So it's a first and goal. That's the San Jose State player is Chandler Hawkins there. And USF's another lineman. It's Mays. Eric Mays, their starter, one of their tackle spots. That's the other tackle. Right. Good. The right tackle on the, the play two plays ago. Yep. So first and goal upcoming once the players make their way off. Fourth down call. They opted to go for it. I like that personally. Yeah, I do too. Remember, I, I, remember what I said about that second half adjustment. Just yeah. stay aggressive. Yeah. Attack. Attack. I, I, That's what's going to make you your money is attacking. Yeah, I think teams sometimes get too conservative and play the percentages too much. You got to take some risks. Here's a handoff and a touchdown. Darius Tice powers his way in for the USF touchdown. How's the line go? You mess with the bow, you get the horns. Got it right there as he powered his way into the end zone for the USF touchdown. It's not hard to see from those helmets. No matter which USF <laughs> player you get, you're getting some horns. That's right. There are fans that have made their way to this game, and about 400, we were told, made the trip out from Tampa. Nadelman's kick is good. 35-16 now with 7.35 to play in the third. But it all started with stretching the field, and this is an offense. Sterling Gilbert loves to stretch the field, does it with Valdez Scantling, and then it's just power play right up the middle. Two tackles out, go behind the guards. to San Jose State University as USF is in control of this one 35 to 16. A big reason for that is Quinton Flowers and this is a young man who has had to overcome a lot of tragedy in his life. At the age of seven he lost his father to a drive by shooting. At 17 years old he lost his mother to cancer and then just a few years later in college he lost his oldest brother who was shot and killed. Now the coaches say you would never know it all the tragedy he's gone through in his life because he shows up to the facility every day with a smile on his face and because he is so positive he won't allow others to have a bad day. Guys he is clearly the leader of this team and he has helped the transition to get the guys to buy in to this new coaching staff. Thank you John and I, I you don't wish that kind of tragedy on anybody but I love the story of a young man as Charlie Strong said he doesn't make it an excuse yeah. he, he could easily say oh well this happened and this happened and this happened and the, the toughness he has mentally and I'm sure spiritually and in all those areas is very impressive to me Randy well, it speaks to his character and it also speaks to the the quality of men that are in the coaching profession yeah. in college football that embrace these kids and give them a support programs and the support that, that they need to get through these kind of things. I mean, for all the negative stories about the coaches that do things bad, there are 10 times the coaches that are in it for all the right reasons. No question. I agree with you 100%. Flag flies. Get the call from Alvarez here. It's Charlie Strong for the 18th consecutive game. 30 or more for USF. Full start. Offense number 62. Five yard penalty. Still first down. Coloni having a rough day. Yeah, Coloni and Taylor have both had two false starts between the two of them. Starters at center and guard and seniors. Big possession here for San Jose State. Not much doing there on first down. And for USF. 35 points in the game so far. The 18 straight games, the longest streak in FBS of 30 or more points. Swinging out Roberson. They're going to throw it. He went backwards and came back through. Dangerous picked off as he inbounds. 
Abraham looked like he got at least one in. They're discussing. And yes, it's a turnover. And Abraham, another big play for the USF defense. Another turnover for the Bulls. This is the shining example. And does he get a foot in first? I don't think he had the foot in. And he does control it. See, he's got the ball the whole way through the process. I just don't think he had a foot in to be a legitimate interception. I, I, don't, I don't think he had it. They're definitely going to take a look at this, and we may have another review situation. Brent Brennan in the offense pulling out a little uh, trickeration there out of their bag. We saw that a couple times in practice yesterday. Yeah. Uh, sort of a double pass. I'm with you. I don't think he got a foot I, in. I, I, the angle we had earlier, the first one, this one here. When's he have the ball? Does he have it yet? Now Where's he's his got left it. foot. Left, left yeah. foot is kicking up dust on the outside yeah. in the white. Yeah. So I don't think he had it. Yeah. I'm with you. David Alvarez on the headset down below us, down at the 21 yard line. It's under review. Ruling on the field was an interception for that South Florida defense and their senior out of Tarpon Springs, Florida, Devin Abraham. Four interceptions in his career coming into the game. He's involved in a turnover in the first half was Abraham. You know, where, we, where we've had the examples a couple times in these replays. Now the left foot's on the ground. Mm -hmm. The right foot is, but he doesn't have it yet. He doesn't have it yet. Now he has it. And hold on. Stop it. Go, go, stop. Nope. Now keep going. Just a little bit. He's off the ground. Now he's got possession. See the outside? See that rubber kicking yes. up in the air and yes. the white outside? I do. I think that's from the left foot. I know he toe touches with the right foot, but I don't think he's got full possession at that point. That's going to be the problem because they're going to look at it in total. Because there's no way the left foot is. Left foot is definitely out of bounds initially. I'm with you on that. So I think that makes the right foot. See right now. Right now the left foot right there. It's out of bounds. Here's the right. Here's the here's the right foot. The left foot is out of bounds. See yes. that's out of bounds. And this one is the right foot that's in. But he doesn't have possession of the ball yet. Yeah. And we were showing the feet, but it's his momentum is going out of bounds, and that's when he secures the ball. See, he's just now starting to secure it. And this foot there, I'm sorry, this foot there is not on the ground when he secures it. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> Brian John Marie, the defensive coordinator. The verdict from David Alvarez, our referee, is coming up soon. The defender bounds. Therefore, it is an incomplete pass. Third. Bulls on, Mr. Cross, and I'm. Yep. It was the right call. Yeah. Yeah, it really was. It's a nice, really nice job by the officials. I mean, I knew that took a while, sure. and we're into speed, yep. but getting it right makes that worth it, I think. More important than anything. Yeah. We have the system. Get it right. Third and 14 now. Pressure coming. Love flings it out far side. Catch is made. And they're going to be well short of the first down. Those Bulls defenders swarming to the ball. Ronnie Hoggins. Over there to make the stop. It'll bring on the punt team and Carrizoza once again for San Jose State. And you're starting to uh, appreciate if you're, you know, just joining us here in the second half. When you have these offenses that move at this kind of pre a pace that Brent Brennan and Charlie Strong want to have, 
you've got to be able to uh, get first downs, otherwise the game takes forever. Spot this. They're continuing to run at the sideline, and 6.24 to play, and that's where they're going to spot it. 45-yard line. <laughs> You would caption that look. Really? <laughs> what? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> 16 yards on the punt. Six twenty-four remaining in the third quarter. 19th ranked. USF on top. Start of the game in a 16-0 hole. Now lead 35-16. Good fake. Little hop step there from Quinton Flowers. Wrapped up and dropped. Good work there to track him down by Maurice McKnight, the senior. Yeah, this defense has done a pretty nice job of limiting Quinton Flowers. It's a good word for it. Nice job there by Jermaine Kelly, the corner. Good job on a dangerous weapon in Valdez Scantling. No matter how fast you are, if you don't have your legs, you can't run. That's a good I point. I figured that out all by myself. <laughs> Third and ten now. I went to a fine state school down <laughs> south, too. Flowers, dangerous throw into double coverage. Ginda dropped into coverage. Trey Webb was in there as well. Yeah, Trey Webb. Trey Webb looked like he was he was torn between catching it and knocking it down. So fourth and ten, and the ball is at the 47-yard line. And on trots. The return team for San Jose State. Hernandez comes on, the punter. The lefty. There's Ty Cottrell at the 10. Flag goes. Play clock expired. Delay game. Kicking team. Five yard. Four. Hernandez a little more room to try to I pin was him. Say the way this kid's been kicking, that's a totally intentional five yards you give up if you're Charlie Strong. Yeah, you're, you're just playing right into the wheelhouse of your punter, distance-wise. Looking for that corner again. Can he find it? See where they spot it. 10 yard line and certainly safe to say Brent Brennan very familiar as you pointed out Randy his dad was a player here 67 to 68 his mom a cheerleader and family support is tremendous that's his mom right there with the stanchion <laughs> obstructed, view. obstructed view but what a great lady Brent's dad died a few years back and I know my daughter Kelly got married. They were her godparents. Right. And they came out to her wedding. And that was the last time we saw Steve. But, you know, what a, what a fabulous family. And if you've got the Brennan family, they wouldn't fit in one box. Like, <laughs> you, you'd need the box Beth is in. Really? And the box next to them. And maybe even the athletic director's box next to that. <laughs> to get the whole family in it. Wow. Here's Love. Looks for Holmes. Out of bounds, incomplete. Third down and seven upcoming for San Jose State. Still, we got 4.51 to go in the third quarter. They need to convert. They're not completely out of this game at this point. No, they definitely are not. And I think that's something, you know, Brent Brennan and, and his offensive co coordinator, Andrew S Souter, have got to and just get this offense in their mind. They're, you score quick. You can score quick. Goodness knows they can. Sure. They moved it well in the first half. Here's a throw and a beautiful catch. Oh, Bailey Gaither. What a day he's had. His day has been a highlight reel. Bailey Gaither not only blocked a punt, 
and he does catch that ball. He gets it all the way in, he wraps it, and that ball never hits the ground. Injured San Jose State player, that's Jeremiah Coloni. He's, cr he's cramping. Yep. And that was on Dietrich Nichols, that play. Yeah. Yeah, I tell you, that, and there's an example there. If you're a new coach and you want to get to know your players, there's nothing that tells you more about a receiver than that kind of ball. And we've seen Oliver there, the tight end, catch a few of those contested balls. We've seen, you know, Gaither catch a few of those. I mean, if your receivers will catch those contested balls, that is invaluable offensively. That gives your quarterback so much confidence because sometimes, I'm saying this standing next to the all-time passing leader in SEC, SEC history, history, Aaron yeah. Murray, so yeah. I feel a little silly. But from a quarterback <laughs> standpoint, you know, that is just, that's diamonds. If you know it doesn't have to be close and your guy will go do that, will go catch it, man, that's got to give this young guy so much confidence that his guys are willing to go up there and get it. Played 12 games last year, four catches for 43. He's well outdone those numbers, and good to see Coloni back on his feet. You know, safe to say, between Gaither and Oliver, yeah. their statistics will significantly change going into 2018 over what they have been before. Yes. They're both going to be really utilized. And if you're a San Jose State fan, you're going to see this young tight end. He, you're going to think he's a fullback. You're going to think he's an H-back. You're going to think he's a tight end. And part of the way he's playing, part of the time he's playing wide receiver. They're really high on Oliver. Really like what they've seen from him and the way he fits into their offensive game plan. Packer is the running back. They like, as we touched on in the last series, what he's given them. And Camp, here's Gaither, another catch. He's got great wheels. Stole 90 bases in high school. 90. 90. Way to dig deep, Ben. Impressive. I try. <laughs> how many? How many doubles and triples? I don't have that. Ah, oh, come on. I had 90 steals. Because all I knew was he was a fast guy. Okay. So, you know. Well, I was a slow guy, so I always knew that triples were out of the question. <laughs> That's With his speed, he could hit an inside the park home run, That's probably. Right. They might go to him again. No, Here it goes. No, they're going to go. Instead, it's intercepted by Wilkins. Wilkins on the return for USF. Just walks out of bounds to avoid the contact. They were looking for Jeremy Kelly, and Mazzy Wilkins comes up for the pick. And, and now this is not meant to dog Jeremy Kelly. But what I was just saying about the other receivers and contested balls and how they fought for the ball as a young receiver and Kelly's only a, he's a junior it's his third year. You've got to learn. You can't let that guy catch that ball. You can't get in the position where you fall down. You just, you just it can't happen. I'm sorry. Maybe sometimes it does. But when you're in this position, you've got to want that ball more than that defensive back at least guarantee that he can't intercept it. Brian John Marie, his defense, three takeaways in the game. So San Jose State, their first five drives, they put up 16 points. Since then, six punts, a turnover on downs, and three interceptions. If you're a San Jose State fan, don't kill the messenger. Just reporting the facts on what's happened in the game for them as Flowers. They'll lose about a yard and a half on that run. Good job of Contain to force him out of bounds there by the Spartan defense. Quinton Flowers up for five preseason awards. Never been done in the history, the, the short history, well, two decades, but right. of their program. Well, Jim Lovett is really the the godfather of that program. Right. I mean, he's their George Washington. He's the guy that put them on the map as a coach. And at one point during one season, they were ranked second in the yeah, country. Remember that. False start, offense, number 79, five-yard yep. penalty, second down. Just think about that for a moment. I, I am. <laughs> Can you picture coaches or the Associated Press these days? No. Voting for a group of five team and putting them second in the country? No way. I, I agree a thousand percent. Yeah. First thing I thought of was, <laughs> what did Bama and the SEC and Ohio State and them, they all had two or three losses? Is that why they got ranked so high? Yeah. Love to look back and see that poll. Wasn't that in the 
Like the 06, 07 yeah. time frame around yeah. there? Right around, I want to say, week seven, week eight, yeah. right in there. Yeah. But that was, a, that was a heck of a time. Heck of a time for USF. And I tell you, with this young man and right some, now. Of the, some of the talent they're going to be getting into this place, as Charlie Strong has proven he can get talent out of South Florida. And mm -hmm. by 2020, when Brent Brennan and San Jose State go back go to their home and home, <laughs> If they think they're good now, wait till they see them in two years when they really get a, a chance to stock the talent right out of the home state. Third and a dozen now for Flowers and the goal offense over the middle. Nearly intercepted looking for of all that scantling. Kelly and Ginda were in the neighborhood. Kelly threw his hands up saying, man, I should have had that. Yeah, that was a oh an overconfident throw by Quentin Flowers because there were three people that had a chance to catch that. But only one of them were his, was his guy. Because both defenders that were right there had excellent chances intercepting that ball. Flowers talking things over there. Hernandez back on to punt once again. Cottrell back at his 25 awaiting the punt. Man, this young man's got a leg. And Getting down there on uh, the punt coverage squad and Gator, or I beg your pardon, Cottrell, writhing in pain. Ferguson down there again, and that's yeah, his right arm or wrist. 42 yard punt, Randy. Puts his hand out and lands. All that weight went on his hand. Huh. As a guy that spent the better part of his career wearing a uh, cast slash brace on your left hand, I've very familiar with landing like that. He can do some serious damage. Hopefully he's all right. That's the hope. 222 remaining and USF defense, their work via the interception. Yeah, Sautel, big one there coming off that bat, the batting of the ball by Oliver. Again, batting of the ball there, an uncontested pass. Another interception. Not finishing the play. Not finishing the series, not finishing drives is really haunting San Jose State right now. No question. Here's Packer. Good tough run there from the youngster. A former walk on there. He was dropped by Andre Polk and got some help from Kelvin Pinkney as well. I think technically he still is. Well, yeah, he still is. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> Once you're a walk on, you're a walk on. Still a walk on. Yeah. He's just. What a great story. Seeing though. the I mean, field now. A local kid. Snap, false start, offense, number 75, five yard penalty. Second and then, there's a story there with Packer. There's 130 teams playing in the, the bowl championship yes. level. Every single school in America that plays at that level has at least three Packers. Guys that walk on and out of nowhere, the coaches go, who is this kid? <laughs> Get him a uniform. But that's why the, the walk-on is invaluable at all levels. And that's what makes those stories when you see the coaches at a meeting giving this kid a, a scholarship. You know, often that's what that's all about. It's about a kid that's got talent and rewarding that talent and that persistence. Dejan Packer, that young man for the Spartans. Pitch and catch, love the throw, but be short by a couple on that third and 11 play and they'll bring on the punt team here it looks yes they will at 90 seconds and counting remaining in the third quarter six now seven three and outs for usf's defense ninth punt of the day for carrizoza He's getting his workout in. He's done a heck of a job, though. That's cool. a bullet. That's a beauty. Fair catch at the 22-yard line. Made by Tajay Fullwood with a minute three remaining after a 45-yard punt. So that'll bring USF offense back onto the field. And Sterling Gilbert, their offensive coordinator, and his stops along the way. Well, a lot of different places. And think of the, the quarterbacks. You know, Jimmy Garoppolo there at Eastern Illinois. Yes. 
um, Texas last year. You know, he's got Bushel there, among others, and a bunch of other guys. But this consistent thing with Sterling Gilbert is points and yards. If he's in your offense, you're moving the ball and you're scoring a lot of points. Fun to watch. Good run on first down, about eight picked up there. And a lot of connections, too. You know, you talk about Andrew Souter, he's got a connection to Gilbert, worked with, him la worked with him last year. Said he's like a brother to him. Yeah, Cottrell getting off the field with that injured right wrist, right arm. Flowers, pump fake. There's a way out of bounds, incomplete on second and two, and bring up third and short. Rushing yards here today. This will prove to be an invaluable lesson, I think, for both these football teams. Because got goodness knows Brent Brennan's got a lot of teaching opportunities off of what happened today for San Jose. Yeah. But for Sterling Gilbert and for Charlie Strong and this USF team, man, you know, you're, you're going to get away more than likely with a less than stellar effort. Right. And forget what people think about it. Forget that, you know, when they vote next week, yeah. they're going to look at it and go, is that all you did, really? You were down 16-0. Maybe, maybe, maybe you're not ranked, <laughs> or how, whatever the consequence is. Right. The point is, Charlie Strong and Gilbert, the entire staff, is going to have so many great chances to, to coach these kids up in the coming weeks. Using this as an example, they can harken back into, they can harken back to every, every time they travel this year. Right. So that's the end of the third quarter. Number 19, USF on top, 35-16. You're watching college football from San Jose, California. <laughs> Have some nachos presented <laughs> by Geico. <laughs> Time now for our Chick-fil-A fan cam. Some of the looks around the stadium here today. Both sides represented. Good contingent of USF fans made their way from Tampa. And our score by quarters were just about set to begin the fourth quarter. 16-0 lead for San Jose State after one. 28 points put up in that second quarter for USF. And now as we start the fourth, it's 35-16. There are the two buddies, Randy, Sterling Gilbert and Andrew Souter. Spent a lot of time together. You know, Souter's got nothing but great things to say about Sterling Gilbert. And it, isn't it amazing in the coaching business what a family atmosphere so many of these yeah. staffs are yeah. and stay? Really yeah. like that. That's what really, you know, impresses me. You know, is you sit there and you talk to a, a Charlie Strong, and he's going to talk to you about this staff and why he, you know, it came with him from Texas. Yeah. You're going to talk to Brent Brennan and the connections to how he got a hold of some of these guys. Like, Brent Brennan got a hold of Andrew Souter because Andrew Souter called um, Dino, Dino, Babers. Dino Babers at Syracuse yes. and said, will you call your guy Brennan out there and ask him if he's got something for me? Yeah. I mean, that's how he ends up. What are, and they're always helping each other. It's a tangled web. Montel Aaron, the redshirt freshman in there. He's firing away right away to Trey Hartley. And on the coverage was Mazzy Wilkins. So that's a pretty good career. Numbers on Montel Aaron in his high school career, a game shy of two dozen. Obviously, we know a different level. He's six foot five. And bring him in to see what he can do. That one nearly intercepted by Hoggins there as they look to the tight end Oliver. And the thing about Montel Aaron is it's he's the kind of player that when you talk to a coach, you, you hear a little frustration in Andrew Souter's voice. And I don't mean this in a bad way about the kid, but he doesn't necessarily show in practice and in meeting rooms that. Uh, that. <laughs> and all, all, the, all the great things that a coach wants to see. He wants to see the quarterback really reach out and grab a job. Well, and he says, but this kid gets in a game or gets in a scrimmage, all he does is move the offense. All he does is move the chains and score points. Big pick up there and a nice throw to the tight end, Oliver. And now Ziegler gets to the 45-yard line. Jamon Thomas dropped in first minute of the fourth quarter with Randy Cross, John Schiff, and all of our great crew. My name is Ben Holden. Good to have you with us. 
in San Jose, California. Second game of the day for us here on the network. A Colorado State in their opener. Ooh. The game before us against Oregon well, State. We mentioned Aaron Aaron Murray was here doing some observing. Yes. Um, we were in the press box watching his guy Bobo. My, he, Mike don't Bobo. forget, Mike Bobo was the offensive coordinator yeah. and Mark Rick. Yeah. When Aaron was breaking those records. That's and right. That team Whew. out of nowhere. I don't care. I don't care how many negative things and how much he Aaron was dogging Bobo's offense. <laughs> it was still scoring points. The bus just ran over him. <laughs> There's tracks on his back now. <laughs> Fourth and five. So this is what the 21st punt of the game. Wow. Sounds like a clinic. 11 for Hernandez. This one the 10th. For Carrizoza, that hit a San Jose State player in the back. Saturate on there to grab it. Senior cornerback. After a 42-yard punt, we'll take a break. Early on in the fourth, number 19, USF on top, 35-16. Randy, time now for our Geico difference makers. And as I say, up on the marquee, it's Quinton Flowers first. Yes, it is, and I talked about learning opportunities. Eight for 20 is a learning opportunity, especially the way that first quarter went. And Bailey Gaither, you can't have enough, I guess, positives to say about this kid. He took advantage of every opportunity he got. Quentin Flowers and this offense, it took them a while to get going, but once they did, once that first quarter finally ended, they, get, they got things going on. Sticking the ball down the field. Ran the ball consistently throughout this game. And running here with Tice. Good pickup on first down of close to five. Stopped by Osai. And you look at this uh, San Jose State defense. That running defense is the one thing they better get better, better get a lot better at. Because they're giving up a lot of yards rushing. 174 just in the first half. Eric Odom there, first time he's been at D.C. Defensive coordinator, good run there. Because the whole thing about first running, down. the whole thing about stopping running and running the ball, it cuts kind of both ways. So you talk to Brent Brennan, and he talks about how important not only the pace is and how high-tech the offense is, but it's really important to run the ball. Sure. And he said, you know, if you want to be in big games, and we want to be eventually in big games here, You've got to have a, a history and tradition of running the ball. Pass there from Flowers to McCants, who is put together well. Yes, he is. 5'11", <laughs> 235 of muscle. He's, he's got that kind of, uh, what was a Boise State running back at Tampa Bay? Uh, the muscle hamster? Uh, I'm not sure. I'm drawing a blank right now. Second down upcoming. Yeah. That was Doug Martin, by the way. Doug Martin, that's yeah. right. Here's Quentin Flowers back to the air. Catch was made over there by Marquez Valdez Scantling. So and, and now I'm not throwing a, a shovel of dirt on Quentin Flowers' chances at a Heisman, but remember, this time last year, Lamar Jackson. Was like a fireworks show the first month of the season. Every you open the new you you open the web page, and it was eight touchdowns total, six touchdowns total. They slowed him down. He only got five. Yeah. And they thumped Florida State. What do you have eight in that game total? I think it was the comparison between these two and what they did. Yeah, and you know a lot of those yards, as you saw you Lamar know, Jackson struggle later in the year. The difference in yards, a lot of that came early in the year. So, you know, it, my, in yeah. my mind, Quentin Flowers, in order for a group of five player to really be a, a factor, you got to start like your tail's on fire and you got to finish a blaze. And he did not start like that today. Yeah, no, so, he didn't. So, might it hurt him? Yeah, probably hurts. Probably hurts him, probably hurts the chances of this team. 
being ranked is where, where they are when next week's polls come out. Right. But this is about this team and Charlie Strong and company have got to be about what this team is like in December and January. Right. Here's USF in the red zone. Red zone brought to you by Verizon. Two trips in there and a pair of touchdowns. Tice has one of them trying for another one here. Still on his feet. And he gets down inside of the five to about the three yard line. Does Darius Tice. Wynton the Flowers in there cheering him on. Offensive line not doing a particularly impressive job. You know, <laughs> Aguayo comes clean up the middle, but he can't make the tackle. And off again to Tice. That is Ginda that made the stop there on Darius Tice. First and goal now. Quentin Flowers, his team well over 400 yards in the ball game at this point. Do you defense the running back or do you go with edge with Flowers? And Flowers takes one in, hops over the goal line. Quentin Flowers adds to the lead for USF. They're north of 40 now with a point after pending. It's 41-16. Is that the last we've seen of him? We'll find out. 31st career rushing touchdown. Yeah, he's going to rewrite a lot of lot of records book record books. That first time I read that stat, which one? Know, that he was the first. Oh, in Florida, major college quarterback in the state of Florida rushed for over a thousand yards. I kind of shook my head like I said, Nah, I can't be right. No, I did too. It's right. It's definitely right. Nadelman bangs it through to make it 42-16, 9.57 to go in the ball game. Well, Quentin Flowers gets a chance to add to his statistics. Good fake inside. Nice hold inside, but he scores anyway. Growing up, I never seen myself uh, being a Heisman candidate, but people saying that now, you know, I'm a Heisman candidate. Uh, it just is is different. Like I always say, I'll always stay myself, and I don't try to get too much into that. But I'm gonna just focus on one game at a time, one day at a time. Well, 42 points on the board today. Flowers capping off an 11 play, 86 yard drive. Took three minutes and 21 seconds. Is he a legitimate candidate? I believe so. I do ask me ask me again in the middle of the season right and, and I'd probably be even more emphatic. Yeah, this wasn't his best effort today uh -huh. Kicked out of bounds on the kickoff But let's be, let's be honest. It's a quarterback award sure and name two or three four better quarterbacks At the college level for the college game than him. Kick out of bounds kicking team first down from 35 yard line Mr. Alvarez and Comparison between Flowers and the guy that won it, Tim Tebow, State of Florida. Now, to put these numbers in a little better perspective, we yes. at the bottom of the screen, check out the number of games that those stats were accumulated in. So in 23 fewer games, so almost, almost two football seasons, yep. Flowers has put up those numbers. Uh, so it, it, Puts it in context. Here's a pass to Gaither from Montel Aaron down to the 40 yard line of USF. They'll move the sticks. And they're trying to get up there and move quickly. Actually, they'll spot him at the 41 after a gain of 24 on the pass. Aaron low on that throw. Looking for Bailey Gaither once again. Big day for Gaither in this game. He's had better than a career. He's yeah, he's done that, no question. Two touchdowns. Red shirt freshman Montel Aaron in finds that tight end they like so much. Here in San Jose, Josh Oliver. Tackle made by Tajay Fullwood. Tajay Fullwood. 
Coming in seven career grabs for Oliver and two of them touchdowns. Aaron goes right back to him. Stopped in his tracks by Fullwood from the secondary. Isn't this what, what Aaron's doing here a, a, a little bit? I, 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 th I find it very interesting. It's kind of like a, a preseason game. That, that third string quarterback that you watch and you say, man, look at this guy moving the ball. How good he looks. Oh, he looks good. Well, uh, he's doing a nice job here in this drill. He's making this look good. He's going to make Brent Brennan and Andrew Souders' decision a little harder as to what to do at quarterback. Right. But then how much weight do you put in on the other side of, you know, these aren't the real guys. These aren't the starters. These aren't. Well, some days I'm glad I'm not a coach. Flag flies, throw into the end zone, goes that home. Was, that was a freebie. That ball, there was never a whistle. Yep. Touchdown. So Montel Aaron finds Holmes for the touchdown with 8.25 to go. The Spartans and Brent Brennan get six. Defense, number nine, in the neutral zone. That penalty line. Let's go. There are the two that teamed up on the touchdown pass. Yeah, nice smart play by Aaron. He knows he can just go with it, and he's got a wide open receiver in Holmes. And the point after blocked. Two have been blocked, so that's a 20 point lead now for USF with 8.25 remaining. Step aside for a timeout. Justin Holmes, easy one for him on the pass from Montel Aaron. College football on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. By Bud Light, famous among friends. And by Verizon, not just unlimited, Verizon Unlimited. Twenty point game with 825 left in it. 19th ranked team in the nation. USF on top. Seven plays, 65 yards, a minute 32. Montel Aaron, his first career touchdown pass, 22 yard play to Justin Holmes. It was their first point since 311 in the opening quarter. They go outside and got it. San Jose State got it. Recovered by Kelly, and it's Jeremy Kelly. Well, oh, there's a great example. I, I talked bad about him earlier about that ball that he didn't fight for. Mm -hmm. He fought for that one there. He went after that like it was oxygen. Making sure it went 10 yards. David Alvarez, our referee. case and it didn't go 10. It's got to go 10 yards. Five. Eight. Nine. Nope. Good call. Yep. It's funny on that on that kickoff onside team. There was a guy that was trying to block in front of the ball, not a guy that was trying to recover the ball, trying to clear bodies out of the way so somebody behind him could recover it. So mentioned on the last possession for USF, was that the last we've seen of Quentin Flowers? And there's your answer. He's got a towel around his head and neck, and the redshirt sophomore of Lakewood, Ohio, is in now. Brett Keen, product of 
the high school football factory in the state of Ohio in St. Edward. They're outside of Cleveland. It's a factory up there. It is. They have hockey up there too. Yeah, there's hockey. Okay, just here. <laughs> Sands is in as the running back now with Keene. South Florida, after being in a 16-0 hole, has outscored San Jose State 42-6. They've done it with execution, and they've done it by taking advantage of San Jose State's mistakes, something they weren't doing in the first half, first quarter. He missing on the pass there. His target was Stanley Clairvaux. The line on Quentin Flowers puts up nearly 300 total yards of offense and three touchdowns. That's, that's, that's an okay for him. Three touchdowns. You're going to see him, you know, four passing, three rushing a few times this year. He's got that kind of ability. Hernandez on for the 12th time to punt. Bailey Gaither lets it go. And USF right there to conveniently down it at the one yard line. Nate Ferguson has been outstanding on special teams. Was that a little limp of Hernandez? He might be cramping up all that punting he's doing. 12 punts, man. <laughs> Look at Charlie Strong and his coaching profile. Hired December 11th. Great run he had at Louisville there from 10 to 13 at Texas. Didn't work out. And now a new journey begins for Charlie Strong as a head coach of USF. Yeah, he'll, he'll have the same kind of journey and success here at USF that he had at Louisville. Agreed. And primarily based on what we had talked about earlier, I mean, he's got that ability to, to go into the state of Florida when he wasn't in the state of Florida yeah. and pull talent out. And that's... That's not very hard and very easy. Heck, it's hard for a lot of teams that are in Florida to do that. <laughs> Here's Monroe on the carry. To the outside, taken down by Kelvin Pinckney. And Brandon Monroe had a good camp. Seen some playing time here today. Spartans trying to put another drive together. Montel Aaron near side, catch made by Hartley. Tackle there by Ronnie Hoggins on the last drive. Mentioned that earlier, but there it is again. First point scored since a little more than three minutes remaining in the opening quarter. 13 possessions ago. That's crazy. The amount of times these two teams have had the ball. First down, the conversion for Brent Brennan. And again, I mean, uh, you take a look at Brent Brennan on the sideline. You'd think he was the guy that was ahead. Yeah. But he knows darn well he's getting to know his team. He doesn't really know this team. But if you fight like this, when you're down like this, you can, you can teach. You can do a lot of things. And that, that's what football coaches are at their, their heart and soul anyway. We talk about, you know, you're, John was talking about uh, Quentin Flowers' story, and we mentioned all the great coaches in college football in the country, they're teachers. It harkens back to high school football where they're. Ball came out. Where's it down? Came. Here we go. Taking it back. They're trying to. They're taking back. That is Kelvin Pinckney. If it stands, ruling is a touchdown now. I think it's down too. No, he's definitely, he's definitely going to be down. Wait to see this replay. Yeah. Watch the left arm. Oh, yeah. He props down with the whole side of his left arm. He's down as soon as that arm hits the ground, followed closely thereafter by the knee before that ball ever comes out. Though you wouldn't be able to tell it. Pinkney will have that 
film reel of being a snuff can on his on his desk <laughs> when he's like 70 years old. Ever show you this? Have you ever show you my touchdown? <laughs> They're going to come over and review this. Ruling on the field, a touchdown. But again, it's, uh, you know, the ball never gets down. The knee doesn't get down yet. Not yet, but see, yes. you, can't, you can't put your whole arm down on the ground like that and not be, re re you know, consequences. He's down as soon as that happens. That elbow hits like that, yep. down. Ball comes out after he reaches with it. So from the second that elbow and arm went down, null and void, everything that happens after that. Yes, so they take a look at this. Alvarez, referee on the headset. Yeah, this crew has done a very nice job replay-wise. They've gotten these calls correctly, and yes. not just because they agree with us. Right. But, but, <laughs> but, Few do. But, but, yeah, but they've done, I think, a really nice job of reversing some plays that could have been just wrong to leave them the way Agreed. they were. And that's you don't come away from too many games where you're pretty much unanimous in saying, you know, they really did a nice job. Calling the field was a fumble. And a touchdown, but reviewing it now. Alvarez still on the headset down to our right. They're just being sure they want to know the exact line of scrimmage where yeah. the ball was. They want to know exactly what the time was on the clock at the yep. time when he went down. That's just part of the uh, house housekeeping process. they have to do at the end of the process. Yeah, yeah. After further review, the runner's left elbow is down. It will be third and 10 at the 34-yard line. So there's the verdict. Montel Aaron will get at least one more snap on this drive. 5.54 to play in the game. It was first career touchdown pass here earlier in the fourth quarter. Dejon Packer next to him in the backfield, but Aaron's going to look to throw. Pump fakes now, flings one down the far side. Man, out there is Holmes. Help coming over the top, incomplete. Well, he's lucky. He's lucky he didn't get whacked pretty good on that one because that ball was up in the air and that made him hang. Jamon Thomas. Thomas would have been more than. More than happy to lay a little wood on him. Arizona on for his 11th punt. What a night he's had. 44 and a half, four inside of the 20. When well, not inside of the 20, as McCants is dropped. With a sack of hammers right there, and here's the upcoming schedule for USF. What might be, in your mind, the biggest bumps, if any, in the road for them in this schedule? Well, I, I think you've got to look at right here with Temple. Temple is still going to be a very good fo football team. East Carolina is going to be a good football team. I like what Houston's going to be able to do with Major Al Applewhite by the end of the year. Okay. And we talk about Aaron Murray doing the Florida International UCF game. Scott Frost and company at UCF could be it could be a real problem you know for USF because it's a, it, it'll be a state pride rivalry recruiting war kind of a game yeah so there's plenty of spots in that on that schedule where Charlie Strong and his team will be challenged now there's also a handful of games in there where their attention span will be challenged too and they'll have to learn from this experience go on the road and not spit the bit in the first quarter and Stop spot people a lead because you can't spot that many teams a 16 nothing lead. Damian Sutton getting some time at the running back spot. Quentin Flowers been out for a few minutes here in this four second series that we've seen 
Brent Keen in there. Number two guy, red shirt sophomore. To the near sideline, incomplete out of bounds. As they went to Stanley Clairvo there. And remember last year in the American Conference, it was not USF at 11 and two. It was, it was Temple and Navy in the conference championship game. So, you know, that's that's job one for this team is to win their side of the conference. And that means getting past Temple and the rest of them. Memphis is going to be a really good football team. There, there's a lot of good talent in the American. Third down and 10 here for Keen. On the run, flings it. Catch was made past the stick there. The first down. Gennard Phillips the grab. Sterling Gilbert. Looking on at his offense. You hear the sideline, the, I do. the bull sideline in the background trying to help the officials. Hey. They're so kind. It was up here. <laughs> Fourth and a yard. And we get a whistle. Play halted with 409 to go. The ruling on the field on the previous play of being short of the line to gain is under further review. So they're gonna look at this. Ted, this is the second time we've had this tonight, right? This situation? Yeah, the, the spot, spot. And a yard to gain. Yes, yeah, it is. It is. So Alvarez will come over and I, I, I feel you, do dog. <laughs> I am with you. It's hard to believe it's only the second time in this game that we've had yard to, yard to gain moments here in the replay process. But you have to have at least a couple of those to play a four-hour game. Takes a lot of work to do that. Call on the field. USF short of the first down. <laughs> I mean, where the ball's at, they've got... Looks to me they've got the first down. But, but if you're a Bull fan and you came from that far away, you're watching this whole thing. Yeah, no question. But, yeah, watch where he catches the ball. He's on the, what, the 48-yard line? There he is this right there. He's passed. Look. He's passed the stick. At the 49. He's passed the stick at the 49. He's got it. 48 and a half. Yeah, 48 and a half. Now yeah. he's going to be driven by. Yeah, I mean, they've got to see that as a first down. Right. You would think. Bulls knocking on the door of 500 yards in the game. Now on the replays, we've talked about what a good job our guys here have done. Yes. I'd like to have a baby steps kind of recommendation. Could we expedite some of these? We just showed that's a first down. It is a first down. Next. That's right. <laughs> Move on. Yep. With you on that. Brent Brennan chatting with the official down there. And very, very good start for his team, but the talent, the depth of USF took over in the second quarter when they scored 28 consecutive points. Here's Alvarez with the verdict. Caught the ball beyond the line to gain. That's where it'll be a first day, first and ten, just short of the 50-yard line. Please reset the game clock to 4:48. 4 4:48 on the game. So 503 yards now in the game for USF. First and 10 with less than five minutes remaining in the game. Sutton. Pick up of about three on the run. Preseason poll and team we're seeing tonight. Highlighted in red. Pretty much unanimous. Yeah. When all the first place votes are all on one team. Mm -hmm. 
The, the other thing that's pretty consistent in these first three years of Navy being on the American Conference side, yeah. Um, People don't pick them to win at the beginning of the year, but I'll be darned if they don't usually come up and finish in the championship game. Well coached, well prepared, as you well know, doing their games the last few years. Sutton's got it. Moves up the gut. Short game. So a 2,300-mile flight back to Tampa for USF after this one. They'll be off to a 1-0 start. I would imagine, you know, you get back on you get on a plane and you know, you're in the air by what 11 o'clock or so local time. Probably. Yeah, you're probably, you know, you're on the ground 7:30, 8 o'clock tomorrow morning in Tampa. Sunday is day of rest anyway, so <laughs> that's what you're going to be able to get in is a day of rest. That's right. Sutton again with a carry, spins away, put his hand in the ground and leans forward. Takes it to the 32-yard line. Stopped by Cameron Woodard for San Jose State. San Jose State still with non-conference games against Utah and Texas. Keen couldn't get outside. Kelly finished him off. Trey Webb was there tracking him from behind. And the, and the strange thing that we just saw USF's schedule, you look at San Jose's, the first time I saw San Jose State's schedule on a page, I looked at it and I said, you know, there's something wrong with that. <laughs> what? And I started counting. I went, oh, there's 13 games. That's it. I mean, you have to have a waiver to do that. And one right. of the reasons, you know, they had that, they had that waiver was because of this game that was as early as it was. So they'll play Cal Poly at home next weekend and then go to Texas and Utah in back-to-back -back weeks. Yeah, Utah State's no, no layup either. Right. Coach Sanchez and UNLV has got things going on out in Vegas. That's a fun team to watch play. They've got a bit of a new stadium coming there in Las Vegas they're kind of excited about. I've heard. <laughs> Not, not as excited as they are about that fight that's going on right about now. I don't think it's going to be much of a fight, to be no. honest with you. Well, you know, in, in case, for those family members that are still watching Ben and I right now and not watching the fight, <laughs> all you're missing is 12 rounds of Floyd Mayweather doing exactly what he's done the last half dozen fight he's, fights he's fought. Dancing around. He gets on his little bicycle and he runs backwards. <laughs> And he leans back and he punches every once in a while and he just wins on points. And McGregor, if McGregor doesn't just die of exhaustion, he'll make it 12 rounds. <laughs> Coming up on two minutes left in the ball game. First down, Sutton and Keene doing the work on this drive for USF. Sutton down to the 27 yard line preseason pull in the Mountain West will have all the game a lot of games in the American a lot of games in the Mountain West as well and uh, that stacks up as you saw today Mike Bobo and Colorado State are going to have a little something to say with what goes on Wyoming on their side Wyoming San Diego State Air Force always tough. Rocky Long is such an impressive coach that yeah. not enough football fans, especially college football fans, know a lot about. I like him a lot. Oh, he, I, I mean, like his teams. All he does is play really good defense. Yeah. He's going to run the ball. He's going to be really smart with the ball on offense. He's not going to do many dumb things. And he wins a lot. Yes. Eighty seconds left. First down and ten. Sutton can't get away. Ginda comes in. Wrestling move to toss him down to the turf. Was that an almost a suplex? Somewhat, yeah. Close. <laughs> Number five, 
I, I think there's a lot to like about this San Jose State defense. There's some spots on defense. You know, by Ginda, he really reminds me. But also Aguayo, some of their big guys. It's their defensive coordinator, Derek Odom. Sutton again, still on his feet, banged off one defender and takes it inside of the 10. You don't have to run another play unless they want to, and they probably won't. And they won't, so USF comes 2,300 miles to San Jose, California. Charlie Strong in his first game as their head coach. They were down early, but they put their foot to the gas pedal, and they're going to win this one, and it's now a final by 20, 42 to 22. That was a good effort by Charlie Strong and his football team for three quarters. The one quarter will be a, a nice learning opportunity for his football team, and they are going to hear a lot. They're going to get sick and tired of hearing about the mistakes they made in the first quarter of this one. Yes. And not being ready to go every single time you get a chance to play. Quinton Flowers, three touchdowns, close to 300 total yards of offense. Brent Brennan there with Quinton Flowers. First year head coach here at San Jose State. What a great smile he's got. Great young man, outstanding leader of their team. I'm happy for him. He's going to get a chance to do some great stuff here in the community if he get if the community gets behind him. Yes. Let's get down to field level. John Schriffen with a victorious head coach, Charlie Strong. Charlie, congratulations. Win number one here at USF. It got off to a little shaky start. What do you think about the way your team responded after being down 16 to nothing? Well, you know, when you, you look at the shaky start, it was just in the kicking game, it was just too many penalties. And just hey, Jeff, Jeff. offense is about yes. rhythm. And we had no rhythm there in the beginning. And then defensively, we were able to play well and just keep us in the game. But the way we responded with the 28 points and then to come in at halftime and be up, you know, I told our team, it's, you're going to have to battle through some adversity. But sometimes it's good to have a lesson like this because when you start thinking you're a little better than what you are, then all of a sudden you get shocked early, then we were able to respond. All eyes tonight on Quinton Flowers finished with three touchdowns, nearly 300 yards rushing and passing. What did you like and what do you still need to work on with him? Well, Q is, is a special player. We just got to make sure that the offense continues to run through him. You know, we had some big drops. We didn't need to make those catches and, and just, you know, just the decision making. Great win. Good luck the rest of the year. All right. Thank you. John Schiffen with Charlie Strong. A winner in his first game at USF. For Randy Cross, John Schiff, and all of our crew, our producer, Carlo Generini, our director, Corey Fishman. My name is Ben Holden. Hope you enjoyed the broadcast. It was our pleasure to bring it to you. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports Network, the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. Now stay tuned for the Reebok CrossFit Games presented by Rogue Fitness. We say so long from California, and thanks for watching.